Yo. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to start this video off by saying that this is a director's cut slash definitive edition of a video that I made two years ago. Why does that matter? Well, you see, back when I made that video, I had a far smaller channel and not as good equipment as I do now. And since this video was originally one of my first big passion projects, I wanted to uh, bring it back and update it with all the new information and videos that have come out about the subject of today's video, as well as just provide a better audio and visual experience. Speaking of the subject of today's video, I also want to make it clear that this video is not made to harass this individual, and nor do I endorse harassment of any kind towards them. Some very serious and dark topics will be brought up during the course of this video, and the purpose of it, like all of these Internet Fables videos, is to relay a story to you for both entertainment value purposes, of course, as well as to maybe impart a lesson and message from all the internet tomfoolery. That said, fair warning, this one is going to get pretty dark in the latter half, including some of the new information that has come out about SPAX 3 in the time between the original video to now. I also want to make it known that the interview sections of this video were recorded over two years ago and reflected the opinions of SPAX 3 or Ed Prince Stairs at that time frame. As you'll see, he's not really well known for changing his mind on things, but in the spirit of fairness, you should know the context for all of these questions being asked were over two years ago. So maybe he's changed his mind on some things, but maybe he didn't. Since my original video, a fair bit of extra drama has followed SPAX, which I will be covering for the sake of completeness here. But don't think that this is gonna be one of those every two year types of things. After this, I will never be talking about this individual in a video form ever again. That said, anytime I bring up quotes or accusations from any individuals surrounding SPAX 3, whether it be something recent or years ago, do note that I am not saying that this happened exactly. These are simply these people making accusations and or telling their side of the story. It's up to you whether you believe it to be true or not. And for legal purposes, on some of these, I have no opinion. All that being said, if you're new here and never saw the original video, or maybe none of this is really making a whole lot of sense and you don't even know who SPAX 3 is to begin with, then no worries. Please, just sit back, relax, and maybe get something to drink. We're gonna be here a while. And prepare yourself for the terrible tale of SPAX 3. A hard lesson for all who come to use the internet, write out their thoughts, post their art, share their lives to the endless abyss, is that all that goes on the internet, the vacuous thing, is eternal. Yet like the moon and stars that speckle the open night, we often forget this lesson, come to take it for granted even in its omnipresence. Some, however, are acutely aware of this lesson, but only once they've already made their mark upon the void. 
and so they will try to run from it, cast it in shadow, to start over again. But for those who never change with time, for those who can't help but revel in themselves, never learn from their mistakes, the cycle is always bound to repeat itself. Gather all for the Fable of Fables, one that stretches over a decade, a tale of a legend, of narcissism and manipulation, of dirty black hoodies and noids alike, of Sonic and My Little Pony. This is the tale of both an internet fool and pioneer. This is the tale of Spax Free. The year is 2007, and YouTube had only just begun to become the video sharing platform giant and monopoly that it is today. The sort of content you would find here on this website back then was what YouTube started as. Home videos, videos of people goofing around, AMVs, stuff stolen from Newgrounds and E-Bombs World, the occasional cat video, and of course, video game related stuff. Chief among the video game stuff was a video series that at the time was known as the Angry Nintendo Nerd, who would ultimately become the internet legend, the Angry Video Game Nerd. To say this video series was influential isn't doing it enough justice. The Angry Video Game Nerd was an internet phenomenon, a legend so great that this influence can still be seen in many of today's great content creators. It also might have inspired some guy to make a 6 hour video about him and his impact over the platform and online video content in general. However, with fame comes fans, and with fans comes fan creations, and eventually imitations, tributes, and downright copycats. It's more than fair to say the majority of YouTube content, hell, internet content for some time was angry guys yelling and cursing about crappy games, movies, comics, anything really. Some of the notable AVGN copycats or imitators were the Irate Gamer, Armake21, Wizwar100, Spoonie, The Game Dude, and the man of the hour himself, Spax3. Spax3, also known as Gamer Spax, Hoodie1, Spaction3, Hoodie Drunkino, it uh, it changes a lot, but all these are just aliases, online personas for the real man named Alexander Edison Princeton Stairs, or just simply Ed. And Ed, let me tell you, is an equal measure, an internet anomaly, and a perfect archetype. Born on July 31st of 1984, little is known about Ed's life before YouTube, besides the fact that he was a man who grew up with Cartoon Network, Super Mario, and, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog. Ed was just like most people wanting to start a YouTube channel, even to this day. He was inspired by the works of those who came before him, and thus he imitated them. He started his first YouTube channel on September 21st of 2006, under the name Spax3. His channel info read as such, quote, This is CNASN. I named this channel after the old Cartoon Network, as I want to upload some stuff with some of the old elements of the old Cartoon Network before it sucked. Here I upload original commercials, animated stuff I did, old cartoons, and music videos. Two original series in the works are Short Stuff and Fluffy Action Extreme and Sonic Parenthood. Currently, after playing some bad Sonic games, I chose to get into reviewing games first, starting with my first two. 
I just started doing it for fun and such. But I was getting a lot of good hits and I decided to make the videos more serious and exciting and do anything more entertaining in my reviews as well. I hope I can make many more and make near each better than the last. And I have other videos coming soon as well that me and my friends are working on." Unquote. The primary content made by Spax3 are his video game reviews, which he dubbed Cartoon Network ASN or CNASN Game Reviews. So, what does the ASN in CNASN stand for? Well, first of all, it stands for Alex Edge Show Network, which was based on something I did in high school. And yeah, in high school, I made these custom Cartoon Cartoon Fridays things for bumpers for when me and my friends could watch stuff on my computer during lunchtime. We had an hour to do so. And since we were fans of all this geeky stuff, I figured make it more fun. Like my sister would do some voices. I would do some voices for this stuff. And, you know, when I was new on YouTube, I, you know, just treated it as a fun little thing. And I understand people question it now looking back, but yeah, since things have gotten more professional with YouTube and other stuff, time to move on. I mean, I don't regret what I did in high school because it gave my friends a lot of entertainment. And I guess at the time, considering a few things I do like to incorporate for fan project stuff. Yeah, in terms of branding, definitely time to move on, especially if you, I want to be a bit more professional in this stuff. Spax was also well known for his podcasts, FAQ sessions from his fans, small skits, trying the voice act, and his infamous second channel, Hoodie One, which we'll get to in a moment. Viewing most of these videos is unfortunately quite a difficult task. Well, if you're looking on YouTube anyway. However, luckily via the dedicated lads over on the internet archives, the majority of the most notable pieces of Ed's content can be found and watched and enjoyed by all. Rated T for Team. Game Reviews. Most of Ed's game reviews follow a simple formula, one that honestly most YouTuber game reviewers do to this day. Start with an intro, talk about the story and gameplay and other aspects of the game individually, and then on a final note and overall score. For the time, this is a pretty clean and easy slash informative way to review a video game. However, because Spax was one of those early video game review YouTubers, the majority of his content is negative in an attempt to be like AVGN, with him talking in an exasperated, pissy tone, and occasionally assaulting the ears with something like this. GAMES THAT MAKE YOU WANT TO KILL YOURSELF! Ed's first CNASN review was a review of the infamous Sonic the Hedgehog, or Sonic 06 as it would come to be known. Sonic 06 is actually very fascinating to me from a historical standpoint. In fact, it might be something worth talking about entirely separately in a future video from now. As Sonic 06 was kind of the first game on the internet that wasn't just some old NES game that really grew certain channels and brought a lot of attention to the Sonic fan base at the time. In many ways, it had the unfortunate curse of being the first bad game at the dawn of internet video creation. And when you connect that with what was popular at the time, extremely negative and loud rant reviews of various things, this was the perfect recipe for making what was a bad game into something of an internet legend. A legacy that continues to persist, one that may truly never die. So knowing all this, it is then quite interesting that Spax 3, of all people, was one of the very first pioneers in the creation of this bad game legacy, even if by accident. Many people wonder why so many interesting internet characters seem to be associated or connected in some fashion to the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And while that is honestly a video topic for another day, I'd say it's more than fair to assess that Sonic 06 and this general Dark Age era of Sonic games and content that surrounded it that was so very easy to make fun of put a spotlight on people like Spax. All that being said, I unfortunately cannot show much of the audio for this first video since 
Guns N' Roses music is playing in the background, almost like it's just barely out of the distance of the camera through the entirety of the video for some reason. It's notable that even with this first video, however, uh, Spax's signature style, that being the Cartoon Network intro, breaking the game down into several pieces, and even his general internet personality, he's pretty well established here, from him addressing his watchers as a gamer fans. Hello gamer fans, Spax3 here. His wide-eyed stare, stilted speech pattern, mouth breathing, and general tone are all here on full display. Of note in this first video, after his intro bit talking about what he's going to review, he follows up with this line. And please forgive my stone look, I must have been drunk when I did that. Which baffled me for years. Why didn't he just re-record the scene if he was drunk? Why did he instead take the time to record an extra bit, noting that he was apparently drunk? And furthermore, why would he point it out at all to begin with, since I don't think most people would have gotten the impression that he's drunk from all of this? It's just all so fascinating. The official answer is unfortunately this version of the video is an updated version of the original, with the original video unfortunately seemingly being lost to time, unless someone happens to have an upload of it, in which case, get in contact with me. In this version of the video, he cut out some parts of the original video which many people complained about as well as, I guess, tried to humble himself in saying that he was drunk while recording that first bit. Though, again, if he really was, you might begin to ask why didn't he just re-record that bit then instead of adding in that bit of commentary. So still, it is all the same. Very fascinating, to say the least. The video, like most of its time, is recorded in awful quality. From what I remember, Spax once said in one of his lost Q&A videos that he recorded this video and several of the others via a VHS tape. Ah, YouTube was such a magical, magical place. Spax, of course, does bring up some good points. I mean, after all, Sonic 06 is a pretty bad game. Like his rant about the loading times and glitches, which, sure, everyone talks about these days, but I'll give Spax some credit for being one of the very first to do so, even if it is a pretty obvious objective flaw of the game. Though, one of my favorite parts of this rant is when he goes off about the Sonic voice actors. And it's in this video, also, where the Jason Griffith slash 4Kids hate saga officially begins. <laughs> but we'll get to that a juicy part in just a bit. First, we're going to go over some of his other game reviews and related videos to get a better representation of what the channel provided. Hello gamer fans, Spax here. Welcome to segment 2 of Cartoon Network ASN Game Reviews. In Spax's second game review video, he reviewed Sonic and the Secret Rings, though not before going through a brief history of the 3D Sonic games up to that point, going on to rant about, for kids, and calling Sonic 06, Sonic the Disaster, a copyright of Mighty Nord Entertainment. Besides ranting about the voices, again, something we'll get onto in a moment, he oddly really enjoyed this game, which is quite humorous to me, because I think Sonic and the Secret Rings is a pile of repugnant fucking trash! Far worse than Sonic 06, by a square mile at the very least. But I digress. Spax is also donning his much more iconic hairstyle here, but something's still missing. Something important. Maybe we'll find it in the next video. Hello gamer fans, Spax here. Ah, there it is. Spax's good old dirty signature black hoodie. His true power symbol. One that he has donned for well over a decade. And while I'm sure he has bought more than one over the years, I'm sure he's bought many a black hoodie, I like to pretend it's been the same one the whole time slowly growing more powerful by the day. This next video is what I consider to be peak Spax fiction, his true apex. In this video masterpiece, Spax is reviewing the GBA port of the classic Sonic the Hedgehog game, which to be fair is a pretty bad fucking port. Spax opens with, I have played something that has made my blood boil. It really pisses me off because this is one of the most crappy, 
games I've ever played, released for the Game Boy Advance. Now, I was never intending to do reviews for that console, but this one, an exception must be made. One of my favorite parts of this intro is this line right here. This game doesn't deserve mercy. It should be shot, it should be burned. Do anything the hell you want to it, just kill it. Really trying to channel that AVGN at this point, huh? He goes on to say that EB Games don't sell this game in their stores anymore, or at least the ones he goes to, and how their slogan is, they take games seriously. So, that of course makes sense. Of course, Spax is lying through his fucking teeth, but I made sure to look it up anyway, just, just in the off chance that he's actually telling the truth. But I found no such case of EB Games doing any such thing. I'm not even really sure why he even just lied on the spot like that. He could have said that they shouldn't be selling the game, but I guess it just sounds more dramatic to say that there are employees at a local EV Games boycotting a game that will most likely get those said employees fucking fired for doing so. Either that or he was so proud of the fact that he buys games from EB Games that he wanted to let everyone know that they hold a similar moral standard to uh, good and bad games as he does. So much so that they take games off of shelves if they're not good enough. Oh, and also before we go any further, obviously Spax is an amateur and it was early YouTube, but one really funny thing about all of his videos up until this point is how he leaves these little bits in after his intro where he's clearly turning off the camera, which he surely could have cut out. Anyway, his review of the game is actually not all that awful. I mean, he does do the whole GAMES THAT MAKE YOU WANT TO KILL YOURSELF! But for Spax's standards, the review is a bit more informative of what the actual issues with the game are. Plus, this video is unintentionally fucking hilarious. And it's one that I have come back to every couple of years to enjoy all over again. While Spax may get a couple points right, it should be noted that the actual narration, delivery, and overall tone is, well, abysmal. Spax has this habit of yelling loud into his crappy microphone, nearly jump scaring his entire audience, then kind of explain the issue that he had with it afterward. Spax doesn't really have a voice that lends itself well to narration anyway, but the constant screaming, overdramatic fake reactions to his own gameplay footage, and what honestly sounds like genuine anger, Spax highlights some of the worst traits and cliches of most AVGN clones. What the hell is this? I'm not even touching the direction pad and he's still running. I thought he was supposed to slow down like he did in the original. What? Okay, what the fuck? I was just standing right next to it. That never happened to be in the original version. The glitch acted like it was sucking me in, in fact. God fucking damn it! Ugh, let's go back. I mean, seriously, look. It pulls you in so it can crush you and kill you. What kind of stupid glitch is that? The original never did that. Hate these damn glitches! One of my favorite little complaints in this video is when he talks about the sound effects in the game and how the game messed the sound effects up. And to his credit, he had a decent point and was even presenting it well. But then, he makes a joke about Sega being on something when they made this game. A pretty cliche joke for a channel of this nature, I guess. You know, haha, -ha, funny drug joke. Uh, but then he adds this little bit. They fucked up. Sega's fucked up again. They must have been smoking something bad. Which actually makes sense because I've been to Sega before. Most everyone there smokes. No joke. I cannot tell you how much I love this little comment so fucking much. The number one, he claims he's been to Sega before, when we all know, just like the EB Games comment, that that is a lie. Number two, they almost all smoked, which I'm assuming he means smoke cigarettes, though he could mean smoke like weed or crack, which is quite a claim to make that everyone at SEGA smokes crack. <laughs> I can't tell what's actually funnier though. If he means he saw them all actively smoking some kind of illegal drug and that this was just a normal occurrence in the office, or that he saw them all smoke cigarettes, and so surely that must mean that they must be doing some hard shit too? 
or that smoking cigarettes just in of itself is reason enough for why they would make a bad game? There's just so many different ways you could interpret what he's saying here, but they're all really fucking funny. I know I'm going on about this one comment for a long time, but it just honestly cracks me up every single time I hear it. Also, the line delivery on this one comment about the fucking shark enemy. One thing that kind of bothers me is that the Jaws robots are purple in this game. And yes, I know in the original game in Debug Mode they were purple out of the water. But in the water of the original game, they were red. Why aren't they in this game? They looked nicer when they were red. Fucking priceless. But my friends, I have been holding back on you. For you see, the real reason this video is the apex of Spax videos is for its ending. <sighs> No serious gamer or Sonic fan would like or buy this game. It's a complete insult to this. <coughs> After going over every possible way to play Sonic the Hedgehog on every console available at the time, Spax asks the question of what we should do with this little square piece of plastic. He asks this fellow who calls himself Dr. Eggman Nega, who suggests cutting the game with a knife. But that's just not Ed's style. Oh, no, 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 no. He wants to destroy this little piece of plastic. And so, how does he go about doing that? Hmm, not a bad suggestion. But I think I know how we can make this a little more exciting. So, let's get to work and destroy this thing. Folks, you all have just had the privilege of seeing one of my first memories associated with this website. Seeing Spax 3 light a GBA game on fire over his nasty ass stove, followed by his anime sword slashing the thing into pieces. Kershi Hami, I, I mean, Kami Hami Haing the thing, followed by some other anime attack, and then picking up the little black pieces that remains, like it's dog shit, dumping it into his piss-filled toilet in his bare feet next to a cat litter box, and finally flushing it all away. Now, I don't want to break down every single review he's ever made, but in a change of pace, his next review was the Super Mario Bros. Virtual Console Games, giving Super Mario Bros. and Mario World a perfect 10 out of 10, Mario 64 a 9, and Mario Kart 64 an 8. He also does this little skit, or special effects of sorts. And to do that, we'll need the classic controller, so everyone, get ready for... A blast to the past with the Super Mario games of yesterday. He would also review Super Paper Mario on the Wii in a later video, and also again give it a 10 out of 10 as well. Not exactly all that exciting, but next Spax does something rather uh, befuddling. He reviews the Nintendo Wii back when it was still new, but the way in which he reviews it makes it seem like it's a tutorial video on how to use it rather than an actual review. First of all, you need to hook up the sensor bar. You can either put it on top of your TV or in front of your TV. Without it, you're going to be unable to use the Wii remote and unable to use the Wii. Okay, now to turn the Wii on. You can push this button here, but if you want to be lazy, you can just use the Wii remote and push the power button here. Of random note, it's thanks to this video that I was able to type in Spax's exact old YouTube channel URL into the Internet Archive to showcase some of his old account info. This was also the first video in which Spax's um, fixation with the old Domino's pizza mascot is showcased here. You can also shop from places like Amazon and order food from places like Domino's Pizza. <laughs> now I realize this clip doesn't really seem like much right now, but I promise you, 
This is some sinister foreshadowing. At any rate, I do find this video a little charming though, as it often comes off as Spack showing off how cool the Wii is and how cool he is for having one, and how it does everything like play games, surf the internet, or see the weather or the news, I guess. Did anyone ever use those last two channels besides maybe the first time, by the way? He also reviews WarioWare's smooth moves, and then also goes on to show off his Nintendo Wii collection to showcase just how many games he's already bought for the new console. Other games on the Wii include Excite Truck, a very fun racing game, Red Steel, which is a decent first person shooter, Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, which I feel is the best version, and after a year of disappointments, Sonic and the Secret Rings is a decent game in a breath of fresh air. <laughs> no, no, actually, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's dog shit. My only complaint is that the Wii doesn't have a lot of online play games. I mean, I know it'll get more later, but I don't really feel it has as many as it should right now. Imagine thinking Nintendo was going to have online games in 2022. <laughs> oh, this was made in what, like 2008? Yeah, some things never change, I suppose. Moving on to the next review, however, we get yet another banger review, a true sequel to the Sonic Genesis GBA review, with a perfect opening line. You know, gamer fans, I'm a big fan of Transformers, I went to see the new movie this year, I thought it was pretty good, and I heard there was a game on the Famicom, and as a retro gamer I decided to check it out, and when I played it, only one thought came to my head. FUCKING KILL GAME DESIGNERS! My god, that never gets old. This review of this Japanese Transformer game in particular feels like Spax trying his very best to channel the angry video game nerd, and maybe even a little bit of Arm 821. I feel as though a highlight reel is in order. But the problem with the grenades, they don't always aim on target, and sometimes if you need to transform back as that's your only way to escape, you'll be too late! God damn it. God fucking damn it! That was totally unfair! It blended with the mountains! Damn it! Goddamn fucking glitches! This is one of the most retarded bosses I've ever seen. Oh, it's the same retarded boss again, except times two. This boss is just as retarded as the planets. Let me bring that up now. Have you noticed that every level I've been to has had the same fucking music? It never changes unless you get that fucking B power up. <sighs> yeah, Spax was really trying here, and to be fair, it does seem like a pretty shitty game. Uh, but yet again, loud voice in a bad microphone, not the best combo. But I'd be lying if I didn't say it was more than enough for me as a kid watching this thing to uh, get a good laugh out of me at the very least. But these days, it's amusing on a whole new level, a true product of its time. But then, what about destroying the game and flushing it down his toilet? Well, the cartridge of the game, I would destroy it right now. But since I played it through emulation, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna take Jedi's advice and shoot myself. Since he said in his review, shoot yourself if you play it, fine. I'd rather kill myself than play this game again. Marvelous. Oh, and this is also the first review where Tom, the host of the then old Cartoon Network block Toonami, that was later revitalized by Adult Swim, read off the review score at the end of his videos. This does make some sense being here, since he was inspired by the few times Tom, the robot, reviewed video games on the Toonami block for his own videos. And I suppose he wanted more of those Cartoon Network vibes for his own review show. And trust me, it won't be the weirdest addition to this show. No, 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 no. That would be after a few more reviews than quote unquote season one of the show having been finished and season two finally beginning. This is Yo Noi. It's a game based on me, the Noi. But what is this game about? Well, that's what I want to find out. Put it in, Spax. No problem, Noi. So, you might be thinking, okay, so he had the Noid be a character in the review where he reviews the Yo Noid game. I mean, that makes some sense, you know, that's something I guess the AVGN would do, surely? Well, that kind of would make some sense. 
But see, throughout all of Season 2's episodes, the Noid would become a constant character in the future reviews, voiced by none other than Spax himself. This is because there was a larger narrative going on in Season 2, where Spax had to save the universe from... something, and so his house was transported into Tom's ship, I believe, and the Noid went along for the adventure. And no, I'm not making any of this up, I only wish I had more of Season 2's reviews to show you this in full. But at the end of the day, it was always just Spax reviewing games in his room, regardless of whatever ongoing story was happening. Some of the surviving proof of this larger narrative going on is this intro, which we do luckily have, which I'll now show in full. joy it brings me to finally be able to see this shit after all these years. At any rate, back to the Yonoid review, this whole video's concept was that Spax is showing the Noid his own video game, and the Noid is the one reacting and getting mad about it. And uh... Wait a minute, what am I doing in front of a pizza parlor? Pizza eating contest? Oh god, this better not be what I think it is! Damn it. Pizzas? Okay, just calm down. What sick bastards got all of this? <sighs> I can name a few. The first one's probably Domino's Pizza, so they can use this game as a marketing ploy. I'll murder them! Yeah, you've tried before, and that's worked out well for you. Shut up! It's a real fun time. Of note is also the argument the two have in the finale of the episode. Well, I feel for a great game with a lot of good gameplay, good challenge, and the only real flaw being no checkpoints. I feel this game should deserve a 9 out of 10. Not so fast, Max. Huh? While I can agree it's a pretty good game and a good challenge, I can't let go the errors like B.E. and Pizza and the stupid plot of Clones of Me, especially when compared to Hanamaru. I have to give the game a 7 out of 10. Oh, come on, Noid. It was a game from the 8-bit era. I feel a lot of them had mistakes like that at that time. Can't we just go with the 9 out of 10? I say, give it it. Look. I know it's one of your favorites, but the game is based on me, and I have to judge it based on that as well. Seven out of ten. Nine! Seven! Nine! Seven! Nine! Seven! Nine! Will you two shut the hell up? Nine! <laughs> Doc! Oh my fucking god, this is just, uh... Now unfortunately, we're almost all done with all the available that we currently still have archived. But this next one is pretty interesting. Because you see, this episode is about The Noid reviewing WiiWare slash Virtual Console games. Yes, seriously. You might wonder why Spax was so obsessed with the fucking Noid. So much so that he became an integral part of his channel and brand for that matter. And as we will later see, even his controversies, which, again, don't worry, we'll be getting to very soon. The answer to this question is... Okay, okay, okay. Before I talk about the game on the Virtual Console, there's something I want to discuss about the original NES version. The box art. For those of you who bought the game in Europe, it looks silly with a realistic depiction of Mega Man, but at least it looks accurate, so it's not bad. But look at the US box art. <laughs> that is so pathetic! I don't know who the artist was, but they had to have gotten fired. And if they didn't, I don't know what Capcom was thinking! <laughs> anyway, one of the only other surviving reviews is Spax reviewing several Sonic games on the Virtual Console. 
and has the absolute cringe take that Sonic 1 is better than Sonic 2. I mean, that's just fucking objectively wrong. If you actually believe that, you're a weirdo and I hope that your thumbs break. But uh, with that said, I do believe that you pretty much get the essence of what the show was like. What first inspired you to do YouTube in the first place? Well, I played Sonic 06 when I when I rented it when I was at my godmother's house and admittedly I was not expecting it to be as bad as it was and this is outside of the voice actor thing people may think of because the controls are just really bad and more any other stuff but I think Darkness the Curse if you want to see his review he basically explains everything <clears throat> good friend of mine by the way and what really inspired me to do this was a youtuber who went by the name jedi one and it was his videos that inspired me to do my own and he and i later became friends he's sadly no longer online but i definitely owe a lot to him and i met a few other people thanks to him like wizwar 100 or wizwario as he's known as and he and i are still good friends and i'm grateful and you know, with that, I do want to put out better content because my first intention is to entertain people and improve myself as, you know, a producer, a writer, an actor, a content creator. Because, yeah, um, I look back on, I, I know this is a question towards the end, but I look back on a lot of my old stuff. I don't like it. So just to put simply, I'm hoping I can do better. I do remember there being a bump in quality somewhat in Season 2 and into Season 3, which we'll talk about a bit later. At the end of the day, Spax's reviews seem to always be either something that he hated with a fiery passion, or something that he loved with the same amount of passion. Which, speaking of the former... So, if you're somewhat familiar with Spax, or have ever, at the very least, heard of him, this is most likely the reason why. That tornado's carrying a car! What? Whoa! Ugh. Listen to me! Too easy! No sweat! Yeah! Yes! Okay! Yeah! I can handle this myself. Besides, you got somewhere to go, right? I'll make sure to change Elisa's fate. And that, in turn, should change your future, too. Why does Jason Griffith always talk like this, in this flatline voice that kind of makes him sound like a younger Big the Cat? It sounds so fake and so bad. For a bit of context, you saw the Hedgehog franchise when it jumped into 3D, had with it a cast of voice actors to play, well, all of these guys. Through the Dreamcast era and through most of the GameCube slash PS2 era of video game consoles, Sonic the Hedgehog and Gang went through several different voice actors. But Sonic and Robotnik stayed consistent through these years, with Sonic being played by Ryan Drummond and Robotnik being played by the late Dean Bristow. Dean Bristow unfortunately passed away shortly after the release of Sonic Heroes, and at the time, the four kids dubbed show Sonic X was doing immensely well over here, and while the exact details are a bit fuzzy to my knowledge, ultimately Sega decided instead of just replacing Robotnik with the then Sonic X VA for Robotnik Mike Pollock, Sega decided to replace the entire cast with all of the four kids actors, including replacing Ryan Drummond with the four kids Sonic VA Jason Griffith. And Ed, well, Ed wasn't exactly happy about this. One voice actor dies, Sega decides to fire the entire cast of the Sonic games with the much worse voice actors from Sonic X from 4Kids Entertainment. According to Spax, there are two integral parts to games like Sonic the Hedgehog. One is the gameplay and two are the characters. And thus, from his viewpoint, the voice acting is just as important as the gameplay because they are who represent the characters. Spax thought that most of the new cast were awful and were ruining said characters. The worst case in Ed's mind being Jason Griffith. He thought that Jason couldn't emote, that he is actively ruining the character that he so loves. 
and that Ryan Drummond was objectively superior in every single imaginable way. Spax felt this so strongly that most of his rants about Sonic 06, or as he would later dub it, Sonic the Disaster, focuses on how bad Jason Griffith was as a voice actor. And this topic of voice acting in Sonic would almost always come up as a primary point in any of his major reviews of the 3D Sonic games. But you see, for most people, even people who seemed as passionate about this as Spax, this is where it would end. They bished about it through video form, or through forums or whatever, said their piece, and that's about it. But Ed could not stand Jason being the voice of his beloved blue mouse to such a degree that he made several more rants, found a way to bring it up nearly every time he talked about Sonic, and started a boycott campaign online to get rid of Jason Griffith. Quote, I am organizing a boycott of Sonic the Hedgehog slash Next Gen Sonic slash Sonic 06 if Jason Griffith is going to be voicing Sonic in it. Many have come on board for this in both the United States and United Kingdom, and I want the readers who are hardcore Sonic fans who care about the characters to join in. And don't worry, this is not illegal, so you cannot get in trouble. This boycott involves posting up flyers on phone poles, lampposts, and the brick slash stone walls of video game selling stores. Here are the flyers. Download them and print them from your paint slash image program with the printer setting to fit to page. There is another step to this protest. However, it is a little more intense. Picketing your nearest video game store on the release of Sonic the Hedgehog. I am going to be doing it at the nearby Best Buy, as are a few others. This is not illegal as long as you do not go inside the store. However, since this one is a bigger, comma, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, and you can just post the flyers up around town instead as mentioned. I have even called Sega VP Scott Steinberg and warned him of this, and I will be calling every two weeks until I can get him to confirm that we will get what we want. This is Sonic's 15th anniversary. It should be special for all the fans. To contact me about this for more information, my net contact information is on the flyers." Unquote. To say Spax had an obsession with getting Jason Griffith fired would be underselling it. Spax hated Jason Griffith. He hated four kids, and this hatred eventually came to be his identity on the internet. Spax went so far as to email Jason Griffith several times and said that he wouldn't care if the VA died violently. Jason Griffith, however, he's the only member of the, vo of the voice cast I actually hate. I hate his guts. And anytime I get a chance to diss him, I take it. He sucks so, so much. I mean, every, every time he talks, it's like he's mocking Sonic. He has this really, really dorky tone. He just doesn't sound as youthful as Sonic is, is supposed to be. I hate it. And furthermore, the guy's a jerk. I emailed him once politely for some information. He's a jerk. That's why I hate him. And personally, if he got hit by a car and died, I'd cheer. I mean, he I, I just really hate him that much. He sucks hard, hard, hard. He pretty much proved to me he doesn't give a shit about what he does as Sonic. Even if he tells some of you he does, he doesn't. Trust me. What's more is Spax was so confident in Jason's objectively bad performance that he started a fan dub project with his own posse to redub several episodes of Sonic X, with Spax playing the titular character of Sonic, as showcased here. The sky dies the same, the stars, the moon. Is this the power of the Chaos Emeralds? Is this another world? Or is it time travel? Am I alone? Or did everyone else come with me? Well, it's okay. I'll work things out. 
for obvious reasons, this only really led to more embarrassment for Ed. Even if he claims the dub wasn't a finished project, the ego it took for Spax to build himself up that he was somehow going to be better than a professional voice actor after months of bishing and moaning about Jason Griffith's performance on a cartoonish level, Spax had just unknowingly created the perfect clip, the ultimate punchline to this ongoing joke. And what's more is for Ed to think that this was of quality enough to compare to someone like Jason Griffith showcased to many his narcissistic and imprudent tendencies, something that would only come to evolve as time goes on. What's really crazy about this era is that it started an entire flame war, a back then with many people actually falling to Spax's side and wanting the new Sonic VA gone, and for that matter, all the four kids the VA's gone as well. While others thought that he was being overdramatic and crazy, and that those who really want the VA's gone were also being dramatic and crazy. This would lead to an insurmountable amount of arguments, video responses, sonic forums everywhere being lit ablaze in debate, and truly a clear divide having been made in the Sonic fanbase, one that nearly no one could ignore. Spax seemed to revel in this for a time, with a fair bit of his own fans, friends, and the like fighting for this ongoing cause, to make Sonic the Hedgehog's voice acting great again, you might say. What's funny is there are still debates had to this very day about the voice acting of Sonic the Hedgehog, with many people having very strong and clear opinions on the matter, which is perfectly fine by the way, even if it always brings me back to this time frame. And many people are too quick to toss away legitimate criticism as being the dumb ramblings of a fanboy, when in truth, it's usually coming from a place of love, admiration, and care for these franchises. It can still be unfounded and dumb criticisms, of course, but when I hear someone criticize the direction of a series that they love and care about, I usually, at the very least, hear them out. Because even if I completely disagree with them, it is nonetheless interesting to hear the perspective of a longtime fan. That being said, the criticisms of Spax and his lot that they were aiming towards Jason Griffith and Sega at the time were very childish, as were their approach to nearly everything and all discussion around it. It got so heated and so bad that anyone who had actual legitimate criticism to share against Jason Griffith or the four kids cast or even just four kids in general could sometimes or often were labeled as a Spax copycat or someone associated with him because of the impact his lot had on the entire discussion. They really did poison the well. While it's easy to forget now, Spax really did have a bit of an impact on the discussion of Sonic the Hedgehog on YouTube, a DeviantArt, and the like. He was one of the first real Sonic tubers, you might say. Dang, that just fucked up who Sonic's character is! And I'm never gonna let it go! Spoiler, he eventually let it go. Do you still have a beef with Jason Griffith? There's a lot I want to say about this. Yeah, when I originally had an issue with him, I was really, really unfair. I mean, I talked to him, I heard this rumor once, I talked to him on MySpace, and he just politely said the rumors were false, but I heard otherwise from another official actor, and I just want more clarification. He was trying to politely blow me off, and I took it more offensively at the time, and that was really stupid of me. It was really really stupid of me and I said a lot of stuff I really regret about, about that and I'm disgusted because you know act, I want to be an actor myself and treating other fellow actors like this even if they may not always fit the role or are not always at their best that is incredibly stupid and disgusting of me to do and I, I am ashamed of myself for doing that and Later, I wanted to get out of this because I realized, you know what, this was going too far and I was not being fair to Jason. And, you know, maybe he, I, I see he had a polite reason for blowing me off because, you know, he he's a person too. He didn't want to be stressed by this. And, you know, some people, when I just said, you know what, I don't want to do this 
get rid of the four kids casting anymore or i just said you know what if we have still have issues maybe we can look for other people within there if there's still a contract and you know people blew up on that some either were saying okay he's just doing this because he wants jason griffith gone one person who kind of had that voice specifically said that that was not the case at all because even during that time i said you know what? i think jason should still stay a shadow and honestly yeah I think Jason Griffith was awesome. In fact, if anything, I think Jason Griffith was the best Shadow the Hedgehog voice. There's many other roles I do like Jason had. I mean, he played Miyamoto Usagi in Ninja Turtles. That was good. Originally, he was fine as Sonic, but then he got a bit worse. But then later in the games, he got better again. You play Sonic Unleashed and Sonic and Black Knight, he gave his best performance as a Sonic there, and I absolutely love them. And I think it's a shame he didn't get to go out on Sonic Colors. I mean, I love Roger Craig Smith. I do. So I'm, I'm happy he does a good voice of Sonic. But if the voices were to be replaced, I just want Jason to go out on a huge bang. Not just to give a great performance of Sonic, but also to be in a truly great game. Because currently to this date, Sonic Colors is my favorite 3D Sonic game. And probably my second favorite Sonic game of all time. But also relating to this... When I first joined Facebook and I saw Jason Griffith had a Facebook page, I sent him an apology, and sadly I don't have a screen cap of it anymore. I was hoping it'd be in messages, but it's not. But, you know, he then later responded to me in a more public way, and, you know, he was happy to hear from me and everything. And I said, I told him, I'm grateful you're giving me this chance, and I hope I can do well. And I, I thankfully, that I do have a screenshot, as I've sent you, and... Yeah, me and Jason have been cool ever since, and I do want to support him. I mean, are there roles of his and performance of his I don't like? I mean, yeah, I mean, I hated his performance of Usopp, but to be fair, when it came to the four kids double One Piece, everyone did a horrible performance. It's like no one who worked on that show cared, so... And same goes for Sonic 06, because that's where he gave in his worst performance as Sonic, and he underperformed as Shadow, although granted it was a little better, but everyone's voice acting was bad there. So, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry if this is long, but there's a lot of factors that go into this because of the history and such. On Because, you know, if I ever do a new review of Sonic 06, I mean, I am still going to have to criticize Jason's performance, but I am not trying to hate on him, and I want to at least be fair. You know, stuff like this will happen. If someone gives a bad performance, it will be criticized, but even so... I'm not going to hate on the actors ever again, because that's not fair. Unless I hear the actor did something very, very, very vile, and it's proven they've done something vile. But Jason and everyone else I've heard at Four Kids, or former Four Kids, I have never heard anything bad about them in that regard, and I've gotten to know some of them. They're really cool and nice people. But hey, one way or the other, Spax did eventually cool off on this topic. But the funny thing is... When you're the leader of an angry movement, it means that you have a fair few followers who were just as, if not even more angry, about those same topics. This leads to one of the first times I can insert myself into the story. I had no real care or opinion on Sonic's voice actors. I legit thought Sonic had the same voice actor until I watched Spax's videos back in the day as a matter of fact. I was just a kid, watching content like The Angry Video Game Nerd, Make 21 and yes, Spax3. At the time, he seemed like a pretty quality YouTuber, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was quite the fan at the time. I remember getting super excited about his Season 2 content, and while it's a bit embarrassing to admit, I even think he did help shape my opinions more fully on Sonic 06 back in the day. Since when I had first played it as a kid before that, I remember feeling off about the game, as there was parts I liked, but I also remember it being very, very glitchy, which to my childhood brain was thought to be impossible. Because after all, next-gen games are supposed to be improved in every way imaginable, I thought. And that means less glitches, not more. Oh, how very, very naive I was to how any of that stuff worked. I was also very naive to any of the real drama surrounding this man. Even when I caught wind of some of it, I was nowhere near capable of grasping it all at the time. Well anyway, at the time, Spax3 had a DeviantArt account that he often advertised on his YouTube channel. And, well, since I used DeviantArt as my main social media page of the time, 
I followed him on there along with most of his friends, some of whom even followed me back. Well, one day, Spax would post a DeviantArt journal, which was a Q&A, one of which that you could ask him any questions related to Sonic, and he would give his opinions on it. Well, being that I was also a new fan of the Sonic Sat AM cartoon, I asked him if he prefers Sonic and Amy or Sonic and Sally as a couple. Well, anyway, Spax replied to me and he said that he preferred Sonic and Amy and then proceeded to thank me for asking him a question that wasn't related to the Sonic voice actors as he was tired with dealing with all the bullshit and drama connected to it. And he even friended me back on DeviantArt because of this. This was the first time that I ever talked to this YouTuber, who I had been watching for a while, which was kind of surreal to me at the time. When I look back at this event, I realize now this was around the same time Spax's own fan base had begun to turn on him a bit, and he was no longer interested in talking about the Sonic voice actors. Uh, but they very much still were, and when he snapped back at them, they grew into his enemies, of which he was already gaining many of for starting this whole drama to begin with. But Spax's drama was only just, just beginning. Besides Spax's normal content, he also had a second channel by the name of The Hoodie One, which the description of said channel read as follows. Quote, I'm back and feeling smexy tonight. From now on, I will only upload meaningful videos with a purpose for all the inbreeds and mentally neurotic community that keep YouTube running, as I know you need your videos and I am more than happy to entertain you. Have fun, equals D. By the way, I'm still accepting friend advice. To all of you who try, you may want me, but you can't have me, unquote. This was essentially Ed's shitpost channel, where according to him, he played a character outside of himself. Much of the content on this channel were Skype calls where Ed talked with some guys and gals and kids about such interesting topics as... Hey everyone, let's talk about boobies! Or... Hey everyone, it's the Hoodie One, who's obsessed with his big black hoodie, and I have people with me, Ryder and Pimp and Fish Sticks! Uh, I hey. like cheese. Oh, me it too. Makes me hard. I like cheese in my ass because I'm cold. Cheese makes me hard. What are we cheese. here to talk about today? Burgers! What he said! Rock on! What? <laughs> what? What? Yeah. what? Let's oh. all talk about what makes us horny. Besides that, Spax also liked to take on the persona of an internet smart guy uh, to make fun of his enemies through animations. Nima, could you please help me take out the garbage? My name is Garden Nerd Mom. If you don't respect my opinion, then go fuck yourself! <laughs> That's our Nima. And once, even through song. Everyone, sing along, because this is Jeopardy! This guy, he is round and big, he whines about stuff, and he is a pig. Whenever this guy gets upset, he then fails the internet. Then there's a man with a child's head. When insulted, he tells mom what they said. He edits pics he claims he made. You know this man will not get laid. He's like other fan fiction writers on DA claiming film. Screenshots are theirs. They exist on sites where they don't belong. That is why they're in this song. But there's a sonic artist girl who says everything she draws original despite her fan base. Don't forget that she still fails the internet. What was the purpose of the Hoodie One channel? 
<sighs> oh boy. First of all, I'm just going to say off the bat, I'm actually surprised some people actually took some of the videos there seriously, like the boners video and a few other things. But yeah, I may basically made that video when I just gave up hope after all the drama surrounding me and granted a lot of mistakes I made in handling that happened. So just with people I was with who admittedly were not the best influence for me, I just made a bunch of obnoxious joke videos just to... I guess still want to put out something there or just do something because I figured, hey, if I'm going to be a laughing stock, hey, may as well just do some joke videos with that. But in the end, I just really hated it because just and just one thing, none of those videos were ever really serious. Like the boners videos, the whole thing there was just a farce because I just did that because, you know, I figured this is how I see people react and such. So there you go. I mean, it, it, to a degree, they were kind of fun to do because I was just laughing with everyone. But <sighs> admittedly, I'm not proud of them because this is not who I want to be. It's not who what I want to do. So I later dropped it and tried, you know what? No, I should just try to see if I can fix things and try to do something serious again. The Hootie One wasn't the only place he aired out his dirty laundry though, as that was an awful habit of Spax's. As besides his usual content, Spax was also well known for his furious rants, and honestly it became a real drama show near its end. One such incident of drama that lasted for some time was when Spax went to war with Son Manic. Uh, for those who aren't aware who Son Manic is, well, his real name is Richard Kuda, and luckily for you, I just so happen to have made a long ass video all about his own online history and legacy. So if you want to know that whole story, I'd go check that out. But the TLDW is the man is well known for being a Sonic related internet fool, with a Sonic Saturday AM fan film being the real crux of it all. Anyway, Son Manic wanted to make a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, uh, based around the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, otherwise known as Sonic at AM. Well, it's not relevant going into all the details of how disastrous all that was, Ed at one point was going to play Sonic the Hedgehog in said movie. However, Son Manic didn't like Ed's version of Sonic because, uh... The sky nice and safe, the stars, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon... Yeah, but besides the obvious, uh, another reason was, supposedly, is that Ed wasn't dedicated enough to this project and was too busy with his own stuff and playing video games. Spax would later be given one more chance to try and get the role, but apparently Saw Manic told him that he just wasn't good enough and went with Ed's friend for the Sonic voice actor instead. Now let me go on to the movie director, Richard. As I've said and will say again, he is a liar. He did mistreat me, lie to me, trick me, and abuse me. And I don't care how far he fired Wizwar either, which I think is because Wizwar is a close friend of mine. If he wanted to replace me as Sonic in this project, that's fine. He could have just told me right away that he felt I didn't fit his role of Sonic, or his vision of Sonic. And if he wanted to replace me, that's fine. I, still, I would have tried to help him find a new actor, and I probably would have still tried to help him with the project. But instead, he decided to lie about it, and, he's, and he decided to just trick me for a few days trying to make me not feel bad. But that means I just did a lot of work for him for nothing. And I also found out that he probably didn't want me in the project altogether. Well, if he had a good, reason, a good legit reason, and it was a fair one, then fine. He could have told me that, and I would have just left. But that's not what happened. He mistreated me. I felt robbed, especially since I gave up a job on a website just so I could, could help him. Now, of course, this very much bruised Ed's ego and pissed him off to no end. Uh, so much so that he went on a series of video rants about both his friend and Saw Manic. One of his chief complaints being that he felt Saw Manic had played him, only pretending to give him a second chance when he had in reality no real intention of giving him the role. 
and Spax even claimed he gave up another online job for this said role audition, though he never actually said what the other job was or proved that this was actually the case. Whether or not Saw Manic had tried to play Spax or if it was all just hurt feelings is anyone's guess, but in all honesty, it seems like Kuda just plain out didn't want Spax to play Sonic, and Spax's feelings were then ultimately hurt. This should have been where it ended, but it's not. Spax took things a step further by threatening to sue Richard Kuda over the project, which eventually led to the worst of the drama during this era. While the exact details are unfortunately a bit fuzzy, what is known is a 13-year-old girl who was also working on the project made a video about why Spax was taken off and banned from said project. That it wasn't just his bad voice acting, but it was also because all he ever did was play video games and watch anime instead of actually doing his job for said project. When Spax saw this video, he decided to have his own mom call this 13-year-old's mom. This caused even more controversy and drama, as having your own mom call a 13-year-old's mom and threaten them with legal action over a video when you yourself are 23 years old, well, let's just say it isn't exactly good optics. Spax would later try to clarify this in a follow-up video. I didn't sue anyone, and I've only threatened to sue one person recently and that was that movie director I did not threaten to sue the kid all that was said to her was what she did was suable but I didn't try to sue her I wasn't gonna even try to do it I mean, really I'd ra if I'm gonna sue someone I'll sue an adult and only if it's really 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 necessary I mean, look, certain parody videos I don't mind, but this Sue thing, it's retarded. I've only threatened to sue one person who actually deserved it. Luckily, it didn't have to come to that. Here's what happened. To try to make a peaceful resolution, my mom, whom I've mentioned before, I, I helped nurse, talked to her, the kid's mom, because I figured that would be a more pe- it, it would be a good peaceful way to settle things talk between parents she's the one who's my mom is the one who said what the kid did was suable she wasn't trying to sue the kid she was just alerting her mom okay so why don't you drop this shit and get your facts straight before you claim anything in the end, the whole situation was hurt egos and anger over fan projects that would never come to be. But even still, things would only get worse for Spax going forward. And in each and every case, the issue primarily being his own inflated ego. It shouldn't be any surprise to anyone who's been around the internet long enough when I tell you that when this fella started posting his stuff, his high quality Sonic related rants, people took an interest to uh, say the least. Soon videos mocking, critiquing, parodying, and ranting about this Spax fella sprung forth. And he, uh, well, he didn't exactly enjoy any of that. Spax wasn't a pioneer in doing YouTube videos or being a Sonic fanboy ranting and raving on YouTube. I mean, he is a little bit in those regards. No, no, no. See, he was a pioneer in his use of the copyright claim system here on YouTube. Spax, similar to Mundane Matt and others that have come after him, just could not stand being criticized. And so, he decided the best way to stop this annoyance and a bruising of his ego was to take said videos down, copyright claim them, ban all criticism of him off the website. 
The only difference between someone like him and, and Mundane Matt is while Mundane Matt kept his actions secret until they were all eventually very publicly and embarrassingly showed off on a live stream, Spax, on the other hand, was fairly vocal about his copyright claims. It didn't even try to hide the fact that he was taking these people's videos down. Many people would say that this is a bad thing to do. It's bad to copyright claim and take down people's videos anyway, especially when fair use is more than applicable to these. But also, it's a good way to, well, piss people off because you're using the copyright system, something that many YouTubers struggle to get around as a YouTuber yourself. It's why often when this is done, said YouTuber will be secretive about it because it's something that's almost universally hated. But Spax never hid it because he thought he was legitimately 100% in the right in doing this. I don't really believe in a thing of good or evil. I'm not a saint, so don't really give me that shit. Don't treat me as I should just be this all good knowing creature. To me, evil and good and evil are just words. However, war and peace, that's another story. Because that is something I do believe should be settled with. War sucks, I, so, even if, so even if we don't like someone, we should at least have peace. If you hate someone, just leave them alone. Look, for me, there's things that matter to me. Friendship, war, peace, and honesty. These are four things I believe in that have a meaning. Good and evil, I don't have any meaning. Look, I'm not a heroic figure. I'm just an anti-hero, pretty much. I mean, look. Th this world's savage. If we have to do anything to defend ourselves or make it out there, I don't care what it is, we do it. Things would only get worse from here as people started calling out Ed's act of banhammering. And so he began to make excuses for his behavior even more. It started with the usual defenses. Those people were slandering me using my name or clips without permission, until he began to use his mother as an excuse. According to Ed, his mom is a lawyer, and she told him that he was well within his right to take these videos down, even the ones that dared to simply mention his name in anything but a perfect light. By Ed's view, as soon as he uploaded a video, those were copyrighted exclusively by him, and no one was allowed to use a single frame of them Otherwise, they will be eradicated from the website, even though he himself used, or by Ed's logic, stole GameSpot and IGN footage, used the Cartoon Network logo, and even used copyrighted characters as actual, well, characters in his later reviews. When people confronted Spass with these facts, he would respond by claiming his videos were a fan project until he eventually imagined up his own company called Mighty Noid Entertainment. Cause among everything else, Spax was also quite obsessed with the Noid, as we've kind of showcased a little bit earlier. And now, according to Spax, because he had his own company that he just now made up, he now has more than a right than ever to take down any video about him and his videos. Quote, I'm not reporting them. I hired someone else to do the legal stuff for me. And don't talk to me about this stuff. I live with a lawyer, so I know more about legal stuff than anyone. I run a business now. This is how things work, and it's been causing problems despite ignoring it. Leave me alone. I don't know who you are, but I am in no mood to be nice. I run a business now. More than ever, I have the right to have anything using my material without my permission removed. Especially if it's 100% stolen from me or used to harass me and my friends. Viacom has the same rights on that part. No one likes it, no one has to, but you got to accept it. Don't want to accept it? Tough. Unquote. People already didn't like Smacks, but then comparing oneself to a company like Viacom, well, let's just say he wasn't winning anyone over at this point. People even pointed out that his fake company, for argument's sake, uses a copyrighted character, uh, once again using his own excuses against him, to which he replied, quote, don't ever quote me on copyright. I know all this stuff, and no, Time Warner couldn't file a lawsuit against Mighty Noid Entertainment. 
It's a fan project. I'm not selling products on it or anything. I know the legal system, unquote. As a small side note, one of the other series that Spax had going on his channel was the Ask Spax Q&A show, where his fans could send him in questions through online comments, Xbox messages, and Wemail. I'd like to show you a bit of the only episode of this that we currently have remaining, since the first question addresses this issue. Neku Dark asks, where did the name Mighty Noid Entertainment come from? Well, first I want to clear something up. We're not a company, we're a group, but that doesn't make us any less legit. It's an alias for us and we're allowed to do stuff under it. But to your question, it actually has a double meaning. The first thing is that it's based off two cartoon characters, Mighty the Armadillo from the Sonic the Hedgehog games and the Domino's Pizza Boy. But when choosing the name for our group, you want to make sure that the names of the characters we chose had a double meaning so that we're not infringing anything. Mighty is a name meaning great or big or something, and Noid is actually slang for Paranoid as well, so... Our group roughly translates to Mighty Paranoid Entertainment. Very fitting name indeed. Ed Spax didn't just take down YouTube videos though. He also took down and got several people banned from the website of DeviantArt. One such example of this was a user that went by RandomDCE, who also had a YouTube channel at the time that occasionally made fun of Spax as well. RandomDCE wrote a text rant on DeviantArt calling Spax out for his behavior, uh, both on YouTube and DA, to which Spax promptly had taken down and eventually had said user banned from the website. The rant reads as follows. Spax free. Since you love being the center of attention so goddamn much, I'm writing a rant just for you. I dare you to remove this rant as a violation of copyright. Newsflash genius, it's not a violation of copyright to say that you're a no-talent hack who is afraid to hear the truth from people. That's right, Spax, people make fun of you because that's human nature. And you keep throwing yourself in the spotlight to warrant more humiliation. Oh, is someone making fun of you? Welcome to the human race! In the past, people have made fun of me. Guess what I did, Spax? I laughed because I thought it was funny. But you want to cover up other people's opinions of you because you think you're better than everyone else. Sure, if you get troll comments like, you're gay lols, fine, remove them. But when people tell you the truth or mock what you're doing, you try to sue them. Yamato Bushi slammed me in a rant on YouTube before you closed his account like the little bitch that you are. It was funny. We laughed about it and Ball Pusher was created. Also, what the fuck is up with this bullshit about you running a company? I'm sorry, I didn't know shitty little fanbrat sites who try to review the next-gen games turn a profit for that kind of thing. YouTube Play and HMV are internet sites that make profit, so that's a company. You live in your mom's basement. Posting less incredible reviews, having no job or any form of talent does not equal company. I know why you claim to have a company. Because you're like so many other wannabes chasing after the angry video game nerd. He has ties to ScrewAttack and Spike.com, not to mention his own site of Cinemassacre. Far be it for you to think of something different. You're gonna copy him with your stupidly named Spax's Game Tune Zone. No one in their right mind thinks that's a great title. Here's a suggestion for a better name. Please make fun of my crappy website! Plus, why Cartoon Network and the Noid? You do not own either product, so stop claiming you do. You honestly think it's cool to have your reviews associated with Cartoon Network? A kid's channel that used to be cool? Why not Adult Swim ASN, or Jack Daniels ASN? Or why not Spax's Reviews? Why the hell does a video game review need a fancy title linked to a TV channel that has no connection to what you're talking about? I'll laugh if you review Dead Space. Just to see the Cartoon Network logo in the same video as Dead Space would be hilarious. When you tell the YouTube community that you're on Viacom's side, you might as well paint a target on your back. I honestly think you will do anything to keep people talking about you. But to be honest, we're tired of you. You are a broken record that the DJ won't stop playing. 
In closing, Spax, you're probably not even going to read this and send this rant down to removal hell. Like so many others who just told you the truth. Enjoy living in denial for the rest of your life. In the end, Spax, like so many others that he could put hurt on the internet, abused the system to get what he wanted, using his lawyer mom as a sort of call to authority to excuse his actions, something that only soured people more to the man as a whole. Before it was at least innocent, if not rather crazy still, Sonic Fan Rage Wars. Now it was something far, far worse. Spax was actively making enemies by the day, making an even greater internet fool of himself every time he seemed to post a new video or write a new DeviantArt rant, and overall, feeding the trolls every single time. It was only natural then that he would eventually have an Encyclopedia Dramatica page dedicated to documenting his interesting internet shenanigans. Quote, what they did was a crime. Internet harassment is a crime and is not protected by free speech. I'm having my lawyer slash mom look into this. One of my friends was attacked by this site and now if anyone else is, especially those closest to me like you, I will find the people who wrote it and attack them head on and even other stuff." Unquote. Encyclopedia Dramatica or ED is an encyclopedia for people like Spax. Chris Chan, DSP, among various others, that once chronicled the drama and shenanigans of interesting individuals on the internet. Though these days Kiwi Farms is mostly used for that, with ED standing as a sort of archive for the old drama of the old internet. Back in the day though, it was quite the thing to have. If you were famous enough of a person to have an Encyclopedia Dramatica page, and you weren't like a celebrity or something, this was something that was going to be detrimental to your entire online world, basically. It was the nuclear option. Naturally, when Spax learned that ED had started making fun of him and his lot, he decided to wage a war against the site to threaten them with legal action, stating, quote, Warning, individuals who post comments as part of harassment generated from Encyclopedia Dramatica will be added to the litigation now being formulated under the Commissions Act of 1934, as recently amended by Congress as part of the conspiracy. Every post made constitutes further evidence of the destructive and harassing nature of the Encyclopedia Dramatica website. If settlement cannot be achieved, suit will be filed in federal court under the Commissions Act of 1934, common defamation laws, state conspiracy laws, and any other tort, civil, criminal, or equitable remedies available. Posts that are numerous such that it interferes with the deviant's ability to enjoy the benefits of deviant art. Similarly, provide additional evidence of harassment, invasion of privacy, infliction of emotional distress, and similar violations of the deviant's rights. Note from me, and no, these are not what parodies are. It's pure harassment, and to those saying the Commission's Act does not exist anymore, it does. If you want to keep using ED, use it for what it says it's used for. Parodies and not harassment and slander. All the comments made here get stored as evidence. This is not a joke. Unquote. This threat only served to make things even worse for Spax as people pointed out his apparent lack of knowledge over the law despite his claims otherwise. But also, for once, Spax didn't have the power to take down this criticism. He couldn't just copyright claim it or flag it down on YouTube or on DeviantArt. No, this ED page stood as a monument to his antics both the ones he had already committed and all the future ones that he would come to commit. The stories seemed to go on forever regarding Spax taking down videos, pictures, and trying to ban anyone who dares to oppose him, which only made people want to mock him more. When you, an individual, try to take away others' ability to talk about a topic, including yourself, you're fighting a tidal wave by which nearly no one can actually defeat. 
as we then started getting some of the most popular parodies and videos from all of this. So many creative minds rallying around this, frankly, villain of YouTube. You have rants like that from the late Helsing920. First of all, folks, for those of you who don't know who Spax3 is, he is a Sonic the Hedgehog and Mega Man fan fanboy who doesn't quite understand how copyrights work. There have been dozens of videos on YouTube that have been pulled for copyright infringement reasons by some bogus company called Mighty Noid Entertainment. If you don't know what that company is, it is a company that was created in Spax's feeble little imagination. And he thinks that because he imagined it, he has copyright to it. Unfortunately, the problem here is that Spax doesn't fucking understand how copyright and fair use works. I actually looked this shit up, folks. Fair use. The following things are covered under fair use. Commentaries, criticisms, parodies. Gee, what the fuck has he been pulling from YouTube and DeviantArt? <laughs> Commentaries, criticisms, and parodies. Holy balls. He's pulling down shit that is protected under fair use. Animations made by Coconut Buyer. Jeez, what is your problem? You're supposed to be the good guy. Personally, I don't really believe in good or evil. I'm not a saint, so don't give me that shit. Don't treat me like I should be this all-good-knowing creature. To me, good and evil are just words. What? Is this the great hero of video game land? Looks like a dweeb to me. Hey! You have no right to call me that! All you want to do is spread drama. I fucking hate you, and I hope you die slowly. Whoa, holy shit, kid. Calm down, I was just teasing you. What are you doing? I'm drawing a picture of me stabbing you to death. Oh god, what the hell's wrong with you? Fan songs. Spats to sue you for all your videos. Get money for a new Sonic game. Spats gonna get some eight dollars. He will now buy a new Sonic and he's gonna wind up at it too. He will also tell his mom he will file 1,000 lawsuits. He wants to hurt his feelings long. Ganon vs. Link 1000's animation. You're like the greatest thing ever. Without you, I'd probably be some fat f who lives with his parents and blows all his welfare money on Sonic games so he can fap to underage pictures of fictional characters and make shitty game reviews on his failure of a site. That's it! Fucking Jason Griffith has gotta go! He's the reason why everyone hates me! Therefore, it's his fault! And of course, the magnum opus of them all, Jim 81 Jims, who you all might know better as Mr. Medicare these days, two-hour series chronicling Spax's antics. Other people have come forward and they've done parodies, they've done spoofs, they've done all sorts of crazy shit. You know, I've seen animated series and I've seen rants and I've seen just a lot of really clever shit out there that's funny. It's funny, it's entertaining, and it's good. And what happens to those people? They get banned. They get kicked off of YouTube. They get kicked off DeviantArt. And, you know, it's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit that he can wield that kind of power. It's bullshit that people will, you know, flag videos for him. He's got people flagging videos for him. I don't know how he started this little miniature empire on the internet, but he did. I, you know, if, if you want to say anything about Spax, with all his faults, he has done that very well. He has built up his own little fan base very well. You know, if he had been smart, he would have just ignored it, and it would have went away. It completely would have went away. This would have died out. Nobody would have given a shit. But he couldn't ignore it. Or if he was smart, he would have done something witty, he would have done something funny, he would have fired back and said, you know, fuck you, uh, you know, video content creators. At least I make original shit. You're just, you know, you're, you're taking what I do and you're, you know, twisting it, but you can't even come up with your own shit. But he didn't do that. Instead, what he did is he pussed out. He did the equivalent on the Internet of what a kid would do in the classroom when they get made fun of. He ran to the fucking teacher. And we all know what happens in an elementary school or a junior high or a high school when you run and tell the teacher. You get your ass kicked. 
The class hates you for doing that. Nobody likes a fucking tattletale. That's what he is. He's a goddamn tattletale on the internet. And hell, even Larry Bundy Jr. made a cheeky video about Spax, him interviewing Chris Chan and asking him what he thinks about Spax 3 and Jason Griffith. <laughs> Yes. Also, uh, no, another thing, uh, a lot of people have been asking me to tell, uh, ask this, is uh, what do you think of the voice actors for Sonic the Hedgehog? I mean, there's, I must say, there's, there's somebody out there on the internet who's uh, very opposed to uh, Jason Griffith uh, doing the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, what do you think about that? Are you bothered with the voice? Mm, yeah, pretty much like the uh, original voice they've been going with this uh, whole time. Uh, changing it... Uh, would uh, be a, but I don't know if it, I mean, I don't know if it would, I mean, it depends. I would have to hear the new voice and compare it to the old voice to uh, make an opinion. Although I, will, although I will say this, in comparison to the animated series, you know, where they had the uh, kid who was Urkel originally voicing Sonic the Hedgehog versus uh, what, who they have for Sonic X in the video games, uh, yeah. I'd, say, I'd say that the newer, vo the, uh, newer guy does it much better. Oh. No, there's uh, there's two guys do it. Uh, there was uh, the guys uh, doing it in Sonic Adventure and Sonic Heroes. There's a guy called Ryan Drummond, but then they uh, they fired him because he couldn't make it to New York, and they hired this guy called Jason Griffith. And oh, they, that's uh, too bad. So yes, so yeah, basically uh, everything you hear now at the moment is Jason Griffith, and I was just wondering if you thought you know if you noticed any difference. Hmm, I didn't really notice a difference. As someone who's been an online figure for so long, is there anything that you regret? Well, I've said a few regrets so far, but I mean, to say a few others, look, um, I've mishandled things with a lot of people who've been jerks to me. I won't say any specific names right now, but, you know, I, I wish I was better at controlling my emotions, the anxiety especially, because I just end up getting angry and yelling. I, I really want to control that better. <sighs> And it's a long struggle, and it's something I'm probably going to have to deal with daily. But even so, I really need to work on it, and I'm going to hopefully put in more effort. Well, actually, I am, but I want to really hope it can keep improving. Yeah, I wish I could have handled more of that stuff more maturely. And when it came to the reporting video stuff, I'm just going to say, I think, so, I think some of this may have already come up in the video, but just so you could hear it from my voice. A lot of this came up when it came to pedophile slander, which... <sighs> That's disgusting, and that's and using my content in a way that's defamation of character, and you know, attacking people in a way that's dishonest. That's not fair use. So that I had the right to report, and a lot of people came to my channel attacking me for it. Some people may think it was this one guy who did it, and maybe they know who I'm talking about, but won't say their name. And it wasn't really this one guy, I would have ignored that. It was people constantly coming to my channel and attacking me, and maybe they did because of this guy, so, I mean, maybe there was a bit of an influence there, but it wasn't the video alone, so I really don't like them constantly taking credit for that. Uh, going on the DMCA things, when more stuff came up, I went way too far with it, because there was stuff that was definitely fair use and not defamation of character, and that stuff that was fair parody, and... I heavily regret how far I went with this. That was not fair. It was not cool me. And to people who are willing to be reasonable about this, and I've said this in our videos, I apologize. And if you ever want to talk to me about it, as long as you're willing to be civil, I'm willing to do that. But if you're not willing to be civil, then I can't work anything out with you. And as much as something may have upset you, if you're not willing to talk to me like an adult, I can't fix anything or work anything out with you. I'm sorry. And, you know, recent stuff and how I've handled a few things, as I mentioned, too, I do regret that. I want to be better as a person. I really do. Because I know there's some people who never realize their mistakes, they never learn. And I try to learn. There are things I have. Sometimes it's difficult for me to stick the, stay the course because, you know, anxiety and such. But even then, I got to take control of it. And if I do something wrong, even if it's a report, even if it's a cause of, you know, mental illnesses like depression or anxiety, it was still my fault. I've got to own it. So I'm not saying I'm not guilty. 
I mean, I want people to understand mental illnesses, but even so do you at least understand maybe there was more going on, but even so, I still got to take responsibility for it. So it is my fault if it happens, and I won't deny that. So keep in mind, I'm not going to try to use stuff like this as an escapism or get out jail free card. I made the mistake. I need to own it. But as long as you're willing to talk to me about it, I want to problem solve. And I really hope we can. Because, you know, I have listened to others. And when they brought some stuff to me and saying what I should have done, I have said, you know what? You're right. I should have done things this way. I should not. I should have tried to handle that better. You're absolutely right. I was not thinking that way before and didn't think that way till now. But you're right. And I apologize. I do want to do better. I mean, if you like my content or not, whatever, but as a person, just keep in mind, I know I've made a lot of horrible mistakes. I know I have mishandled a lot of things. And there's sadly going to be issues I still probably will mishandle. It's not easy for me, especially with a lot of issues. But even so, I want to get better. I do want to improve. And again, where I screw up, I want to, I need to own that and I want to make up for it. So I just hope that can be understood because, yeah, again, people to hurt, people I've hurt and wrongfully so, I apologize. I would like to make things up with you. Around the peak of Spax's original YouTube channel, he had around 4,200 subs. A respectable number for the time. But after a while, Ed had enough of the drama and all those who were mocking him and calling him out for his actions on YouTube. And so he hightailed it off the website and created his very own website for hosting all of his old and future content. Uh, similar to something like that guy with the glasses. Except not as good. This website was titled The Game Tune Zone, and besides Spax, quite a number of other YouTubers and content creators would join in on the website. Again, the obvious intention being to emulate the popularity of that guy with the glasses. Some of the other content creators on the website were Big Al, who would later leave and I guess make a series about Spax's antics. Again, if anyone has any more information on Big Al and that, please let me know because I've gone looking for it and I really can't seem to find any information about it, besides the fact that it did exist. Mike Maverick, or the Ace Gamer, or the Super Ace Gamer, who was once an enemy of Spax, uh, before back when he went by the name of the Super Robot Soja OG, Wizwar 100, and even Guru Larry for a short time, though I imagine the latter was once again a wee bit of trolling. Spax and his posse would operate on this website for several years, but many members did eventually leave, with Guru Larry leaving fairly quickly, and again, Big Al leaving over the drama of Spax. Again, all that being lost of time, and actually, that kind of goes for most of the content during this era. Not that there was much of it, since Spax sort of took a leave from content creation and uh, video game reviews as a whole for a time, and instead was more interested in grand collabs than the like with his group. The Spax review show officially ending uh, in season three. I believe the last review he ever made was for that of Sonic Colors. You know, I thought it could work. Some things did work out, but other things didn't. Hence, so, you know, had a site for a while. I, you know, a lot of people who managed, who, you know, were posts for the site really thought what I did was impressive, and I liked that, but, you know, other people didn't like it, and... You know, in the end, since it doesn't really matter anymore, I just want to try to do what I can on YouTube. Is there anything that you're really proud of? Well, even though I've had some rocky starts throughout this whole thing, I have made some good friends, and I'm very happy for that. And I have developed more as a voice actor, as a writer, as a content creator, video producer, and, you know, there's been people I've genuinely been able to entertain, and you know, legitimately, and for that, I'm happy because that's what I want to do. You know, what I started with Hooded Quickies and all that, I'm happy with what I did. I got to collab with a lot of people. I got to work with a lot of people, and I hope to keep doing that. You know, the friends I've made so far, I'm very grateful for, and there's other people I've had issues with but made amends with. 
you know, friendships can last a while and you can always be there for each other to help them. I mean, granted, I'm, I will say this just one thing on um, people who claimed, oh, you betrayed your friends. Keep in mind, if I will be there for my friends, but if they are being horrible to me and they have no remorse for me, they're not my friends and I'm not going to be there for them if they're not my friends. But again, to those who we are able to work out, I am grateful for and I do hope I can help more of you and, you know, we can help each other. To everyone, I'll just say to has helped me and to people who've let me help them and we've been able to work things out and who've helped me improve and I've helped them improve. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. As a matter of fact, Ed was so invested in this big grand collab that he did eventually come back to YouTube with a new channel under the same banner of the Game Tune Zone many years later, where the main type of content would be skits such as hooded quickies, comic dubs, even some animated comic dubs, uh, most to do with the My Little Pony or Dragon Ball Z franchises. He eventually even tried his hand at a new game review, one that was about the original Sonic the Hedgehog. The review was supposed to be a two-part series where he goes in depth with the game, and I won't lie, while the skits are still awful and the delivery is still pretty weird, almost like it was created in a time capsule, of the content was actually a lot better than what he had done in the past. You could tell he genuinely loved the game of Sonic the Hedgehog, and knew shit about it hardly anyone knew. Well, except maybe Cyrus Shell, you know? Among this content, Spax also made a public apology to everyone about his past action and how he wants to move past them, and away from all the drama that he helped create. Now he just wants to create content, not drama. Spax had come back to YouTube a different person, someone who wanted to leave the past behind, things he had grown past, and just create content with his friends. It was a noble goal. It's kind of funny, actually. Most of Spax's actions had largely been forgotten online as well, unlike others of his kin like Chris Chan or even Richard Kuda, who whether they deserved it or not, had the spotlight constantly on them and a barrage of people constantly documenting them. While Spax on the other hand had largely escaped the spotlight and lost the attention of ED and never really got the attention of Kiwi Farms at all. No, instead Spax pressed forward with his new internet life. It took him a while, but maybe he had actually learned his lesson and grew to be a better person. But I'm sure you've noticed, I haven't shown nearly any of the content from those videos up to this point. And that's because, well, it's all gone. Ed had been making content for this channel for several years at this point, but it all eventually, like it always does, came tumbling, tumbling down. would enlist or privatize all of these videos on his channel and would upload one final video to said channel that reads as follows. Quote, I've had enough. So with that, I'm done. This channel is being shut down for the most part as of now and I am moving on to working for Mike Maverick full time. I've had too many setbacks and I honestly can't take it anymore. Unquote. Ed was all set to work for his, again, then friend and fellow content creator Mike Maverick on his own channel that was still somewhat affiliated with Ed's in sort of the same way old Normal Boots channels were connected but still separate from one another. However, this didn't last for long as Ed's personal issues and depression set on by his ex-girlfriend leaving him got worse and worse. Ed even crashing a live stream that he and Mike were doing when Banjo and Kazooie were first announced for Smash Bros. I, I bet we're not getting Dixie Kong, Ed. Oh, great. Wait, what's this? Oh, wait, we got a jigsaw piece. We got so a jiggy. Oh, got a jiggy. Get wait, jiggy wait, with it. Wait, 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 wait. It's a gold one. That means it's a jiggy. So, okay, I guess I was wrong. Maybe we do get something we want this time. Oh, what's this? Oh, but I bet. So, yeah, a jiggy means Banjo Kazooie. But, oh, I bet it's going to be that shitty, horrible design from nuts and bolts that they use in that Sonic crossover game. You know it's going to be the case, because, let's face it, Rare likes, Rare Microsoft like to 
they, they fucked up Conquer with that young Conquer thing, so you know it's gonna be something shitty like that. Oh, and the Duck Hunt dog is being a dipshit again, of course, and... And of course, let's do the tease like we did for K. Rule and... Oh, never mind. I take that back. Um, it's actually Banjo-Kazooie in their original design. Can Thank I say you something? Thank you, Nintendo. Actually redeem your... You actually helped redeem Banjo-Kazooie here by actually restoring them to how they should yeah. look. And if you're going to give them more uh. realistic features, with the fur and the feathers. But they still look like how they should. So, thank you, Nintendo. You made sure Banjo-Kazooie were saved here. Banjo-Kazooie actually look awesome. So, you know what, Nintendo? I give you a salute here. You actually did not fuck this up. Oh, and Gratilda looks awesome, too. Can I? Oh, the final smash is the Ginginator. That is awesome. So you know what? Nintendo, you are the ones who are going to save Banjo-Kazooie. He just... Ever since when Microsoft took over, got rare, they fucked up Banjo-Kazooie with nuts and bolts. The game was not that great. And the design, they fucked over the design horribly. But here, you used the original design. You were going old school. This is how Banjo-Kazooie needs to be. So you know what, Nintendo? Buy yourselves, everyone there, buy yourselves a goddamn fucking beer. Can I please say something? Damn it! Hey. Hey, that obviously hey you know, I don't like being interrupted, but hey, I was talking this time. I just wanted a chance to finish. There you go. Now speak. Never mind! As for Nintendo Switch, we have more games in development. But I'm giving you the chance. Come on, what do you want to say? I was about to say. I was, okay, I was about to say. Congratulations, Banjo Kazooie fans. You got your Banjo Kazooie thing. I actually have one more thing. Well, why do you think I? Why do you think I spoke so much? I am a Banjo Kazooie fan. This would later lead to Ed disrupting streams and threatening to self-exit life on streams and Mike's Twitch chat, and generally just being rather toxic, argumentative, and angry around everyone in the chat and Mike Maverick himself. Ed was in a deep, dark abyss. And while truly tragic, the fall into said pit was very much done by his same old selfish actions, as you'll come to see. What's more is, instead of trying to crawl his way back out of this unrelenting void, Spax was instead determined to drag everyone else he knew down with him. After a while, this would eventually lead to Mike Maverick cutting ties with Ed, making several public statements about the situation, including a twit longer. This was rather significant, as before this time, Mike Maverick had actually made a video on his own channel in defense of Spax's old actions on his old YouTube channel, letting people know that the guy had finally changed, and that it had been a long time since those things had happened, and it was best to let things finally go, and to ultimately move on. However, Mike's twit longer detailed quite a different story, one about an abusive and emotionally manipulative friendship that he's had with Ed for some time now. And with this twit longer and this final cutting of ties with Spax, the floodgates were then opened, and Ed's behavior over the last several years towards his friends, his peers, and his enemies. All of it was ultimately exposed to the world via Mike Maverick's then Discord server, linked at the very bottom of said Twitlonger. During and after this time, Spax also started copyright striking Mike Maverick's videos as a source of a revenge, I suppose. Since it had his Game Tune Zone intro in nearly all of them, since, you know, those channels were all connected, and what's more is he would copyright up to one or two at a time, and then essentially blackmail Mike into doing things that he wants, such as taking down the uh, Discord server and any information regarding Ed, or else he would, well, destroy Mike Maverick's channel with the third copyright strike. This would eventually force Mike Maverick to just simply have to jump ship onto a new YouTube channel, Spax effectively destroying all the work Mike Maverick had done up to that point on his old channel, purely out of spite. The nukes were out on full display 
once again. I think it's also important to note that Ed and Mike Maverick, again, the guy Spax went to go work for after he took down his initial channel and who eventually cut ties of him because of all the drama and shit that he was causing, have kind of been at each other's throats ever since. Amongst all this drama was a particularly infamous phone call that yet again you can find in the links down below in the internet archives where Spax calls Mike Maverick, um, well... I mean, here's the thing, I, I don't want to really... If Mike could get better, I would like that. I don't know, I don't think I'd ever want to be friends with him again, but I want him to improve. I really do. What she did, nothing she did was okay. She outed me publicly. I did not try to do that to her. She did not give me a chance to explain anything on my side. She just showed favoritism towards a nigga who basically lies and is trying to basically make himself famous with no regard for how he hurts other people. And no, I don't care what you say about me using the N-word. This one man, this one man, I've earned that on. And originally, Mike Maverick was calling out Spax over his toxic actions and activity on a very public manner on Twitter, while Spax was trying his best to keep it all private so no one would know all the shit that was actually going on. This would eventually lead to Ed's mother calling Mike Maverick on the phone. Something that again is documented and you can actually listen to. Ed would later make an official comment about this via Facebook, which he would of course have privatized at the time and only a select few people could see this long rant, which reads as follows. Quote, this post is only to be seen by specific people who have my trust. I've posted about various people as of late, one of whom is Mike Maverick, aka Mike Lafayette, aka the Super Robot Soja OG. Well, my mother, who was a witness to this, called him today, and while I didn't hear Mike's voice, my mom's response due to how this way was more than enough to reveal the content. Mike said, when my girlfriend broke up with me, I should have just gotten over it. Okay, I was in a relationship with my girlfriend for about five years. I loved her with all my heart and I wanted to marry her and discussed it with her. She basically threw me away, and she did it in a cowardly fashion of text only. Before, as I learned when her dad spoke to my mom, he said on her behalf that she still loved me and was not going to break up with me. But a few days later, she backed out of that statement. Considering how much I loved her, there's no fucking way I was going to get over this from the get-go. Anyone who thinks so is a fucking monster. He responded when asked, what if he was in the same circumstance? Would he get over it? And from what I heard, he said yes. So this means he must not really love his girlfriend after all. Update, I was never corrected until now. He said, I don't know, not yes. Adding to that, his brother died in his arms, and it made him terribly depressed for a long time. So I guess I should have been telling him to just get over it, if that's how his mindset is going to be. In all seriousness, that was a horrible and traumatic thing for him to go through, and it's awful for anyone to go through. But while his trauma may have been one of the most severe that not many would suffer from, it doesn't invalidate my own or anyone else's either. And for Mike to fail to realize that, it doesn't make me sympathetic for his own grief and experience experiences in return. So he's going to treat others facing some grief like shit? Why should I be compassionate about his own grief? To me, this is the ultimate sign of Mike's hypocrisy and heartlessness and why I can never forgive him." Unquote. To be clear, Spax just compared his girlfriend of five years breaking up with him over his own actions, might I add, to Mike Maverick's brother dying in his arms. Very classy. It was around this time when I originally got involved with all of this. You see, I had always wanted to make a video about Spax 3, mainly because, well, he was one of those YouTubers that I always remembered from my childhood, but I very rarely saw anyone bring him up these days. Originally, I wasn't going to make that video because it seemed like Spax had made a turn for the better, and I didn't want to drudge up old drama if he was doing perfectly fine again. But then of course all this drama unleashed and everyone started showcasing all their clear-cut evidence of Spax being abusive and terrible over the last few years. 
showcasing that he in fact had not changed. He just got better at hiding it. All that being said, even with all this insurmountable amount of evidence, I also wanted to hear Ed's side of the story, because I thought, if nothing else, it was worth at least hearing him out for the sake of looking at this whole situation as clearly and objectively as possible. So I reached out to him and asked him if he'd be willing to have an interview over this upcoming video. He uh, didn't take too kindly to the offer at first. In fact, he originally tried to take down my Twitter page by reporting several of my tweets that had his pictures in them. However, eventually Spax did relent and for what it's worth, decided to actually hear me out and have a fairly cordial interview and conversation with me. Thus, the interview clips throughout the video. Now, you're probably wondering, uh, what exactly started all of this? SPAC seemed to be on the right path for a while. It's the reason why there's not a lot of things to say during the time skip between the old days into the more modern drama of SPACs. Because while there was plenty of videos that he made, any drama was definitely put off into the background. Pages like his Encyclopedia Dramatica would simply update it occasionally just to showcase that he's still making videos and that he was a brony now. And that was pretty much all anyone ever really knew after this new channel went up. And to anyone new or even someone who had known Spax back in the day, if you went to that new channel for the several years that it was up, it seems as though Spax had a group of friends who supported him and who he seemed to support as well. That he was no longer embroiled in internet drama and was just simply done with all that shit. So, what brought him back to this point? Why was he now blackmailing his friends and destroying their YouTube channels? Why were all his past friends and peers now seemingly coming out of the woodwork to air out their grievances that they've had with this man up until this point? What was the beginning of the end? Well, what started all of this drama to begin with was him getting especially angry at his then good friend, Nicola, who he had known for years till now. In fact, he had known them since they were about 12 or 13 over the internet he himself being about 23 at that said time. Nicola had been working for him as a voice actor for some time now in all of his projects, like playing Fluttershy in his MLP comic dubs, for instance. The two of them had a long history together, including Ed at one point, allegedly, want to make that very crystal clear, allegedly even pursuing them as a possible girlfriend when they were 15. They were, in fact, a minor, and Ed would have been around 25 at this time frame. It is important to note there was an actual occasion when the two of them met up in real life. And much of this is detailed in a long post by Nicola themselves that you can read in full in the description box down below for more context into their history together. I'd also like to note now that this information and allegations was not readily available or apparent to me during the time when I first made this Spax 3 video over two years ago. This was a much more recent development, and I would also like to note that Nicola did not make this document as a sort of expose to destroy Spax's life, but it was instead spurned off of the fact that he was yet again very angry at them, both Nicola and Mike Maverick, as well as that entire group. And so, he decided to make a document of his own, relaying his own version of the events of their friendship and eventual, well, non-friendship. That document is titled The Issues of Nicola, and it was because of this document that Nicola felt that it was only right that they also make a document relaying their own side of the story and their long and, well, rather toxic and parasocial relationship with the individual Spax 3 or Ed. Again, you can read the full document as well as watch all the videos that I showcase the Spax here in the links down below. But I think it's important that I at the very least read a few excerpts from this document. Quote, Back in the year 2007, I became a fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog video game series after getting my PlayStation 2 and a copy of Sonic Heroes. As a Sonic fan, I'd go on to YouTube and browse the various Sonic-related videos, and that is when I first saw Ed. 
SPAX 3, and his review of Sonic and the Secret Rings, as well as his many other reviews. I was a preteen at the time and didn't understand the full extent of all the drama surrounding him, or the reputation that he had online at the time. Two years later, in 2009, I had just started high school. I became familiar with a program called Skype, which I could use to talk to fellow Sonic fans and sprite artists. On DeviantArt, I reached out to Ed and asked him if he had Skype. I recall asking him why he didn't like Death Note. He added me straight away and we got to talking. He answered my questions in a friendly manner and all I could think was, oh my gosh, a YouTuber I really enjoy is talking to me. Being 13 years old, I didn't have a full grasp of the toxic nature of parasocial relationships. That is not to say that making friends with YouTubers is bad, it's simply highlighting the power dynamic between fan and their favorite creator. Not to mention the age gap. At the time, I was just happy to get to know him. He was a fun friend to talk to, and he'd make funny jokes that made me laugh. I still look back at those days fondly. A few years later, at the age of 15, I was in an online relationship with my then-boyfriend, Jonah, or Spike Hedgegelian 8. It was cliché teenage young love. Completely out of nowhere, Ed confessed having feelings for me. This was particularly annoying because I'd already had a bit of an experience from people, mainly cis men, confessing feelings for me when I was already taken. Because of how much I cared for him, I wanted to let him down easy. Admittingly, I did low-key have feelings for him as well, but the age difference alone should have made it clear that it was a bad idea to pursue. I finally gathered up the guts to tell Ed that I wanted to be with Jonah. I thought he'd take it well, but he ended up being really upset. Ultimately, I thought we would put it aside, but he continued to have feelings for me and continued pressing the issue despite me making it clear that I didn't want that kind of relationship with him. Ed would start writing me poems and sending me gifts, which I didn't mind at the time because I still viewed him as a friend. Other friends were starting to tell me that they thought Ed was being manipulative or controlling, and every single time, I would get defensive on Ed's behalf and defend his behavior. I looked up to him so much that I developed this idea that he was just misunderstood, and any warnings from others were just people who weren't giving him a chance. This only got worse over time." Unquote. The document then goes on about how they eventually began to work for Spax under the Game Tune Zone website and how there were good times and bad times all the same. Quote, He would get angry at me for being unavailable or wanting a break from him. I did all I could to be a good friend to him, even if it was only to my own detriment. But it was never enough. If I couldn't cater to him 100% of the time, he'd get angry. It got to the point where I was simultaneously dealing with the stress of defending Ed to my friends who were trying to warn me about him and also feeling mentally abused by Ed. I cried a lot. I was going through so much. I couldn't deal with the entitlement anymore. Nothing I ever did was good enough, but I still tried to be his friend despite it all." Unquote. As noted before, all this drama started because Ed was especially angry at Nicola at this time. So, why was Spax mad at Nicola? What was the inciting incident to his entire friend group, YouTube channel, and creative career all burning to the ground simultaneously? What was the chain reaction to where Spax would eventually have his girlfriend break up with him, take down his YouTube channel, go work with Mike Maverick, for him to then destroy Mike Maverick's channel whenever Mike had had enough of his drama, to me, eventually interviewing him and making that video two years ago. Well, it all actually, if you can believe this, started over a Discord server and uh, Nicola putting in a bot called Pokecord, which Spax would then later delete, um, which apparently they got upset about and made sad emojis on the Discord server, which Spax took as them vilifying him, which started an entire chain of conversations, which would eventually lead to Spax getting so angry and upset with Nicola that he would post pictures of his face and arm cut up, noting how their actions and their words were causing him to self-harm. As further detailed in Nicola's document, quote, 
March 2019. Me and Ed are friends again, for the time being, and are sharing a Discord server as administrators. I was concerned that Ed was being too controlling, and sure enough, Ed would constantly take things into his own hands and change things around, upsetting and confusing some people. I had added a feature called Pokecord, which was a bot that let you do battles and catch Pokemon on Discord. In a desperate attempt to fix an issue, Ed had gotten rid of Pokecord altogether, basically telling me that I could reinstate it at the start of the month. One of Ed's friends, Kenny, was not in the know and seemed saddened by the news of Pokecord's disappearance. I posted a sad emoji as to express that I understood the disappointment some people felt about it being gone. Ed interpreted this one emoji as quote unquote throwing him under the bus and vilifying him and just generally reading too much into it. Once again, interpreting something mundane and inconsequential as being the worst possible betrayal." Unquote. Again, to make that clear, what started as a misunderstanding over Discord turned into a spur of angry emails, messages, and eventually Ed cutting up his own face and arm and threatening self-exit of life as a means of emotional manipulation that in turn had Nicola also feeling guilty and putting them in a dark place. This would already be disturbing enough, but then when you add on to the fact that nearly everyone in the SPAX expose group on Mike Maverick's then Discord had their own stories of SPAX emotionally and verbally abusing them in various ways. Add that again with all the allegations, as well as the receipts that many people had as proof to many of their claims of his toxic behavior, and suddenly quite the terrible picture starts to come through. Anyone who was working for him or were friends with him were made to feel awful for not following his exact orders and exact needs. Then when people like Nicola express their emotions, their distress, their hurt feelings, or maybe even their own Float out to his thoughts, Spax would claim that they were the one that's being selfish, that they are the one that are hurting people's feelings, that they are the one that should feel bad, not him, and that if they ever do make him feel bad, they should feel even worse for the very fact that they did. And no one, absolutely no one, was safe from Spax's emotional manipulative behavior. Case in point, when Ed eventually did cut ties with Nicola, he then needed a new voice actor for the character of Fluttershy. So he then decided to have his then girlfriend take their place as VA for Fluttershy. However, his girlfriend didn't really enjoy voice acting and was really only doing it out of love and support for him. She also was of course busy with her own life, with her own job and college and stuff like that. Ed, however, didn't see her as acting good enough to fulfill the role, that she wasn't spending enough time doing it, not giving it the time that he thought it deserved, despite the fact that they had their own job and life they needed to contend with. Nothing was ever good enough for Ed, and thusly he lashed his feelings out on her and her acting ability until she too couldn't stand the emotional abuse anymore and left him, leaving him in utter lonesome despair. And in a spout of rage, he then decided to cut off his then channel and went to go work for Mike. Until then, he too cut ties with Ed for much the same reason. It was all tumbling down, down, and down. What's your side of the Mike Maverick drama and the kind of recent drama as it stands? Okay, this is a long story. I kind of have to go back to the past for this one because I feel it's become relevant again. A former friend of mine whose first name was Sally, she got harassed by Mike because of uh, anti-Sally Acorn. Yes, I know similar names, but not the point. <laughs> she had an anti-Sally Acorn group, which, you know, Mike decided to throw a huge fit on. And overall... He later tried to apologize, but when Sally wouldn't accept his apology or other his friends, because they just want to just not be friends or anything, Mike did not take that as an answer. 
and he constantly tried to harass them for it. And he later got banned from DeviantArt. I was trying to be friends with him. He was known as the Super Robot Soldier or the SRS at the time. And I told him I will make him this new account, which was called the Mighty Mega Man. And I told him, but if I make you this new account, you have to leave Sally, her family, and her friends alone. He agreed to this. But then, the moment he had the account, he attacked them again, and I found this out from Sally herself, and I was absolutely disgusted because Mike made me an unintentional traitor by subjecting Sally to attack when I thought I could trust Mike, but I couldn't. And I did not trust him again for a long time until years later when me and a few other people did a sting on him to try to see what he was still up to. He expressed a lot of regret in that, and because of that, I thought he finally learned his lesson and was legitimately changing. So I gave him another chance, and for a while we were friends. And later he did his whole Ace Gamer thing, which I enjoyed. You know, when Mike had to rebrand to Super Ace Gamer, I wanted to help him, and he was there was things he was going to help me with too. <sighs> then it all went to hell when I was dumped via text, mind you, that's the most I'm going to say about that part, by my now ex-girlfriend. And if people want more details on that, I really don't want to say it unless she or someone else involved with her is making stuff public. So, I mean, if they hear this, keep that in mind. I will not make anything else public as long as they do not. But, I mean, if they do make stuff public, keep in mind, I do have the right to explain, express my side and defend myself if need be. Not, not saying everything I did was right there, but regardless, there is there is stuff I do have valid explanations for. But that's all I'll say there. And I got suicidally depressed about this. I can even vouch that someone had to stop me from killing myself. I'll just leave it at that. And this especially started when Mike was trying to do a react to me, and he couldn't get... Um, our friend who's mediating here to help help him out, but she was not available at the time. And because of that, I agreed to help out, though I really didn't want to because I was still massively depressed. But I did it, I just, but since I couldn't be positive or turkey, I just did it in character because the SPACs character is meant to be a more moody, cynical, I guess in many ways, more negative representation of how I really want to be in real life. But since I just couldn't be positive, I just figured, you know what, I'll just act in character. And one part I overtook too much, which, you know, I regret. And in the end, I just hated doing this whole thing, and it just made me more depressed. And I just constantly expressed how I just don't want to live anymore after this, because nothing mattered to me. And Mike, even before this, was saying, oh, you know, you've had your depressive moments before and everything. You need to get over it. Yeah, my girlfriend just broke up with me. I was not going to get over that within a day or two. That does not happen. Speak to many other people who've been dumped, especially the same way via text. And one thing I will say, clinically, I suffer from depression and anxiety, and it's really bad. And I'm trying to get better controlling it, but keep in mind, it's a daily struggle, which is why after this, I want to... Re and I realize how some of my other friends who have these issues are. It's why I want to try to do more for mental health but you know after this whole incident mike instead of trying to care about me understand what i was going through he did a hate group behind my back which i do have some evidence of and others can vouch for this i mean yeah i wish i didn't have a breakdown on his stream during that time i was just at my worst i, I should not have been there i should have just said you know what this was not a good time and i should have left I, you know, I did post about this on my Facebook, but I said it to specific friends, not the general public, because, you know, I wanted to express what was going on to some people. But I wasn't trying to ruin Mike's reputation to the general public. But Mike, however, did not care about this. He did go to the general public, Twitter and everything. And, you know, me and others were trying to get him to stop, including our mediator here to a degree, and he never would. And he called, oh, me being feeling suicidal and depressed over my now ex-girlfriend dumping me is the most pathetic thing ever. Yet he had, I dealt with someone who threatened it over something worse and something I'll get to 
also adds to the hypocrisy there. But along that same post, he also attacked the friend I made up with because he didn't really want to talk to Mike at the time. He wanted to just try to work things out me at the time and just, you know, not deal too much of the drama. And he, he didn't really tell Mike that in me, so his fault on his part so maybe he should have explained that better but you know he, he's acknowledged that so don't worry he's willing to learn from his mistakes but even so he didn't do anything to the public to vilify mike yet mike name dropped him to the public to vilify him and yeah since this guy was not attacking mike that was really really bad of him and he, he's name dropped a lot of people before when it comes to issues with him so a lot of people feel they have the need to defend themselves with him as i've seen as of late because it wasn't just me who had an issue with him i found out he was repeating kind of the, i mean he repeated lying to me again when it came to the you know lying to me about that server he did and how he was handling things with people or me and such so the lying thing he repeated from those years ago but even more he repeated he was harassing other streamers female ones when i've seen again and you know when he made a mistake he said he tried to go oh i'm sorry but when they didn't accept he either attacked them again and some of this i have seen on twitter or he made alternate accounts to keep attacking them which he's done before on deviantart so so it really shows that after a decade he has not changed and at the current time of this recording, he's 37 years old, which is older than I am, and it's it's really not okay, because, you know, I, I get it. If these are people you barely knew, and they're not doing anything serious, just try to move on and, you know, learn from your mistakes, and who knows, as long as you don't harass them, maybe they'd be willing to give you a second chance, but... It kind of seems too late for that. I mean, granted, I've made a similar mistake with someone, and I'm. But considering a few things, I don't want another chance at that person, so I don't know. But regardless, doesn't make up for how I handled it, just saying. You know, I didn't say anything public about Mike until that point when other people were calling him out, and it opened the floodgates for me to respond to it, and. All, all my public responses to Mike were just responses to these people who were talking about him because, again, it opened the floodgates. But at that time, Mike was already attacking me massively to the public, trying to get everyone to turn against me. So, I mean, here's the thing. I, I don't want to really... If Mike could get better, I would like that. I don't know. I don't think I'd ever want to be friends with him again, but I want him to improve. I really do. Honestly, I really do want Mike to get the help he needs because, you know, I don't want him to be a bad person. I don't want him to do these things. I, and if he really wants to be a good person, I want him to have the chance to be that. I really do. I'm never going to like or trust him again, but if he could do well on his own, then you know what? Good. I want him to improve. I want everyone who has mental health issues or has been a problematic person, myself included, to be able to improve because, you know, I, I believe in second chances, sometimes thirds, very rarely, but I do believe in it. And redemption should be allowed to anyone. I, I guess I'll say that. And if he's listening to this and he takes this out of context and responds, well, keep in mind, I was asked about this and I'm just giving my side since Mike, keep in mind, you kept tweeting and I think on Facebook doing multiple things saying either raging at me, saying half-truths or non-truths. So you've given me the opening to be allowed to say my side, and I, I have the right to defend myself. Please realize that. And as long as you don't do anything else, I'm just hoping to leave it at this. Because I, I mean, I, I did made two public responses on you based on some stuff I said, but they did not name drop you. At this, these two things I did, I just now want to leave it at that. And as long as nothing else dangerous or that's a major risk is happening, I'm just hoping I can. Everything SPACs has built up over the last few years was now efficiently destroyed not by trolls 
Not by Encyclopedia Dramatica or Kiwi Farms. Not by his enemies. No. This was his own doing. Spax had managed to gain something that so few people like him with such an infamous past rarely get. A second chance. And by his own hand did he destroy it all. Others came from the shadows to share their stories of Ed's abuse and behavior over the years. Stories of him manipulating people who worked under him. Of him verbally and mentally lashing out at others on a constant basis. Of threatening his life. There's some that call him worse than Chris Chan, a narcissistic man-child who had brought everyone down around him. They never minced their words. And while this is all their side of the story, it's clear these people all once called Spax their friend. And they all seem to agree he bring with him a toxic cloud that suffocated everyone around him. Till they either left him or got used to the taste of shit long enough for them not to notice anymore. Until even they too got tired of it. When I made this original video two years ago, a lot of people also came to share their stories in the comment section. Stories which I believe weave a web, a pattern, if these allegations are to be believed and taken at face value, by which Spax has continued to play for years and years now. Quote, I was a big fan of Spax when I first found him in 2007. He was actually only the second gaming channel I discovered, and my seven-year-old dumb self was heavily into him. I even copied them in a couple of my own vids. But of course, he eventually left the site due to the various dramas you mentioned in this documentary. And so I found myself missing him for many years, even after finding his stupid little website. I knew a lot of the videos critiquing him at the time, but I was too young to understand. Of course, later on I realized how scummy he was, but it took some time. When I found out in 2017 that he had returned five years prior, I was ecstatic. And I wrote a nice comment on one of his videos complimenting him and asking him if I could credit him as an inspiration for me in a video I planned at the time. And this was back when I still cared about uploading to this godforsaken shitfest of a site. He then gave me a very rude and condescending response. And when I made a video calling him out for it, he grew even more hostile even brought in all of his friends to help defend him, which really pissed me off and showed me right then and there that the dude never really changed, despite how much he protested to the contrary. A year later, I talked to Mike Maverick and a couple other people after they turned away from Spax, and I became acquaintances with them on Discord. For me, I'll never think positively of Spax ever again. The dude is just a hypocritical, psychopathic, manipulative man-child, and that's all he'll ever be. I'm glad the dude has so little relevance any longer." Unquote. Quote, I was Setsuna Angel 99. I really regret getting involved in his antics. I only took part because I was bored, stupid, and apathetic 14-year-old all those years ago. Unquote. It is of note that Setsuna Angel 99 was uh, one of Spax's, shall we say, right-hand men uh, back in the day whenever he had some kind of, you know, army of people that were fighting against sonic voice actors and all that shit. Quote, I went by the name Prince of Moose at the time of all this going down. Spax never knew when to let go. Even to this day, he doesn't. He has never been able to accept responsibility for his actions. Even with you interviewing him directly, I do not believe him. If he truly wanted help, if he truly wanted things to get better, then he would have spent the past 12 years doing so. However, all he did was psychologically manipulate people to his side and have his ego stroked. He has made more victims for his abusive behavior. He is 35 years old now. He needs to start either acting like an adult or just close himself off to everyone. I personally do not care which at this point. It is no skin off my nose what he does, but I do feel bad for the people whom he did manipulate. Most of them underage too. It really tells you something why he favors talking to kids rather than adults, because adults can understand BS faster." Unquote. Quote, Man, where do I start? For what I have researched and experienced for over the past 10 years, Spax 3 has, and always has been, a piece of work. Though the peak of his controversy began when he had a fallout between him and another close associate of his, who once 
goes by Guardian Earth 128. This was during the time when YouTube had that friend list. Guardian Earth was considered one of Spax's closest supporters to the whole bring back the original Sonic voice actors brigade. He was also featured in many of Spax's Skype calls, which Spax usually uploads to his channel. However, when Guardian Earth tried to put Spax's opinions into question, he would always get berated by the guy. Spax then went on this crazy monologue, stating that they were never friends, that he's a hypocrite, that he betrayed him, stupid shit like that. Fans were confused about this sudden event and demanded to know what happened. Instead of handling this in a professional manner, he decided to make what he called an emergency Skype discussion surrounding Guardian Earth, basically emphasizing that one of Spax's friends was contemplating self-exit of life because of Guardian Earth, but brushed off that Spax himself was also to blame for that as well. So he basically had a Skype call trying to get as many people involved in his problems and disclosing someone's personal issues. Then he uploaded it onto YouTube. He even had the nerve to put the video on private. Guardian Earth tried fruitlessly to see if you could make peace with Spax, but to no avail. That was also during a time, for no reason, he started removing videos featuring parody work towards him. From then on, Spax finally deleted his channel, and I couldn't be any more relieved." Unquote. I wanted to highlight this comment because one of the dramas that unfortunately is kind of lost to time entirely as far as documentation goes is Spax's ongoing hatred of Guardian Earth 128. It's not really important exactly what all the details of this drama was. All you really need to know is Guardian Earth was one of Spax's best friends and supporters, and eventually, like everyone else who's really close to Spax, something happened and Spax would cut ties and very publicly air out the dirty laundry of the entire drama for everyone on the internet to see. Quote, I was around 13 or 14 years old when I met Spax 3. Got to know him before the drama because he was known for giving away DeviantArt memberships to support artists. If you ever wondered how he managed to get somewhat of a following for the drama to even take place at all, this could be it. 10 plus years ago, DeviantArt was what Art Amino is today, full of children crying for free stuff. Spax was that free candy giver everyone was following, hoping to get a sweet, sweet free premium membership from him. If your art was good enough, he would straight up gift it to you, or contact you in order to recruit you for his projects. Whether that rumor was true or not, I fell for it and began to lurk around to see how I could get his attention. I eventually got it by drawing Pro Cosmo fan art. Little did I know, he had what I believe now to be a kidnapping fetish, especially of Kareem the Rabbit and Cosmo the Cedrian. This can be seen in his old artwork, so it's not like I'm making this stuff up. So when he began to talk to me about me being kidnapped by him, I play it off as a joke. Nowadays, I'm not so sure if it was. I still have the broken hard drive where all those MSN chat logs are, but since I'm not sure if said hard drive can be repaired, I can't really say I have evidence. Though the conversations aren't what I truly miss of the lost Spax media I had, uh, but his audio clips. When he was let go of the Sonic fan movie project because he demanded to be the voice of Sonic, he got extremely pissed and sent me audio clip after audio clip, shouting out Sonic dialogues fully enraged. These clips were my go-to whenever I needed a good laugh. But after a while, he wore me out, especially when he labeled me as an animator for his company. He was very picky with the animations for his show, even though he was getting free child labor, he demanded ultimate quality. Quality he later messed up himself while rendering all the clips together. Like I said, at the end of the day, I was a kid following candy. When I noticed there was no candy and just drama, I left or at least tried to. Spax was reluctant to let me go, according to him because I was an honest and true friend. And by honest and true, he meant that I never called him out. Spax always kept me aside. Whenever he had problems in his inner circle, he would come to me. He knew I wasn't in direct contact with the rest and knew my language barrier was big at the time, which is why I assume he slipped his tongue a few times with his desires. That's when I became yet another editor on his ED page. I was that girl at the background who he believed wasn't paying attention. I thought he would eventually notice I was the one leaking stuff and would cut off ties with me since he wouldn't let me cut ties with him. 
but he never figured it out. My biggest offense was the leak emo spax.png. Spax ended up being too much of a burden, and in the end, was a big but not the only reason I ultimately cut myself off from everything to get away, then attempted to resurface years later. As for the video, overall Spax sounds nervous on the interview, and his YouTuber apology sigh gets on my nerves. He knows there's people out there who still remember, and he is afraid someone will call him out on his downplaying of a lot of his stuff, especially the voice actor drama. Just to make it clear, his YouTube train wreck in 2007 was an attempt to become an influencer so Sega would take him seriously. I kid you not, that was the master plan, as simple and stupid as it sounds. However, he began at least in 2005 with DA Journals complaining about the 4Kids cast, unquote. I could go on and on with these comments honestly, but with this director's cut I wanted to give these people the chance to showcase their own grievances and stories with Spax as an individual, since with the interview in this video he has more than gotten his chance to say his piece. There are honestly so many comments that read nearly exactly the same way. Whether they only knew Spax for a very short stint of time or knew him for years, it all seems to ultimately end the same sad, ugly way. What's more, in recent years since my original video, channels like the Forgotten Archives have uploaded Spax's old videos onto YouTube, as well as the Internet Archives, including some rather rare ones that made making this director's cut much more complete than the original. And thus, he quickly got back up to his old tricks again and started taking down the Forgotten Archives videos as well, and it had even gotten his original channel on YouTube completely taken down due to this. The Forgotten Archives even made a few videos responding to Spax directly, uploaded video rants from other people who too had grievances with Spax. You can find all of this stuff as I said before in the links down below, which leads to an internet archive page with everything since Spax continues to take those videos down. All this over the recent years spelt one thing out, one irrefutable truth that Ed hadn't changed. Because changing is the hardest thing to do. It's just so much easier to be a part of the abyss, to sink into that darkness that the internet can breed, until eventually you become that of the abyss itself, until the chasm of darkness seems like a loving embrace compared to who you are once you've reached its very bottom. The abyss finally being replaced with the monster you've become. What are your final thoughts and message, so to speak, to those who are watching this video right now? I guess one thing I want to add, my negative stuff, I guess the fact that I've been through this, it's humbled me more, made me have less of an ego, because I've seen some people with really bad ones who get too much praise, so I guess from some of the negative stuff I face, I'm grateful that happened, because I don't want to be egotistical, I don't want to think I'm better than anyone else. And, you know, to the message, look, I know I did a lot of bad stuff here, and I know this video is going to show it, but Dylan said he's trying to be objective and fair to the bad stuff, the good stuff, and, you know, showing where I want to change and maybe where I need to improve. And the fact that he's willing to do the video this way and willing to give me a chance, you know, I, I just hope that other people who come across me, they're willing to understand I do want to do better. I do want to hopefully improve and you know people who may not like me give me a chance if i again again if there's someone i wronged i apologize and as long as you're willing to be civil with me i'm willing to work it out i do want things to improve not just for me i want things to improve for other people even people i don't like i want them to be able to do their best and if they have really bad problems i want them to get the help they need i mean yeah i can get angry and hostile towards people if they really 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 hurt me and I gotta work on that, how I handle that is, and since I want to do better with mental health now, that's something all the more at, than ever I gotta keep mindful of. 
I can't promise I'll always succeed because, you know, sad, sadly, emotions, especially when you have clinical problems with them, can, you know, get the better of you. To everyone who listened to this and is being fair about it, both the good and the bad, I thank you. And, um, you know, and if people who've known me for a while learn about some of my past history, I just hope that you can understand. I'm not proud of a lot of stuff I've done, but I don't want to define who I am personally. And it's stuff that I know I want to fix. And that's because there's a lot of other people out there who've done a lot of things wrong too. Some lesser than me, some worse than me, some equal to me. I want everyone to get the help they need if they're willing to get that help. If they're not willing to get that help, then yeah, I guess be weary. Those were Spax's words, his thoughts, his feelings, the answers to my questions two years ago. It may seem almost unfair to then approach it two years later, knowing full well how dated those questions' answers truly are by now. The optimist in me wants to say that in spirit, Ed still wants to live by those words and be a better person. But the realist in me also sees that he's still very much in the same abyss, the pit he was in the last time I talked to him. For as much as I talk about it, document it, and warn you about it, what is the pit, the abyss, the void by which I speak of. If I'm gonna sue someone, I'll sue an adult. This man is a toxic bile. I was an asshole, I was a monster, and this is my biggest regret. Goddamn fucking! I don't really believe in the thing of good or evil. I'm not a saint, so don't really give me that shit. If I talk to him, I'm flat out telling him... <laughs> Enjoy your last week alive, I'm flying out here. A good knowing creature. To me, evil and good and evil are just words. The astute among you may answer this question with the internet itself. The web of infinite streams. The ocean without a bottom. It's a good guess, but this time, this time you'd be wrong. No. This time, when I refer to the pit, I am directly talking about Alexander Edison Prin Stairs and all others of his ilk. Those who refuse to change. Those who refuse to move on. Those that only take and never give. Those who manipulate the innocent, twist the truth, and refuse to take responsibility. And those who refuse to help themselves. The internet isn't real, it's just text, code, images. The void isn't really the square shaped box with the screen somewhere, it's the pit that lies in the hearts and souls of us all, looking for something to fill it, no matter how poisonous, for some it's better than nothing at all, to be truly and utterly alone. What is the fable that this story provides? What is the message? 
Ed has clearly been hurting others for some time, and it seems any friend he has is destined to one day be his enemy, or worse, his victim, should they not stand up for themselves in time. He has also greatly hurt himself, like so many internet fools who refuse to learn their lesson, to change, to be better. Ed says he regrets some of it, but there's always an excuse for why it's not his fault, how it's always somebody else who caused the issue. But after seeing someone go through so much drama, arguments, make so many enemies, make so many mistakes, hurt and destroy so many lives, there comes a point when you and the ones around you have to see the truth for what it is. That there is only one common denominator in the pain you inflict upon others and yourself. Ed manipulated others, using his own life as a bargaining chip for their compliance. And yet so many stayed beside him for so long. Ed, like a fool, continues to walk off the perpetual cliff hurting himself while he sings a song and dance that gets others to fall right behind him. Even I'm at fault for that a bit. I didn't have to make this video, nor did I have to update this video to more clearly relay the truth. In my original video, I said the most healthy option in these situations is to move on. So what am I doing here? I made this video originally because all of this fascinated me. The drama, the stories, and I did it all to relay a story, a fable of a man who had been online for over 15 years, whom I remember watching when I was just a little kid as one of the very first YouTubers I ever watched, back before I was old enough to know what any of the drama was, back when I just knew him as the guy wearing a black hoodie talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. But after seeing the change clearly hasn't happened, after the two years of the original video being made. I make this video not as a grand expose, but to tell you a story about someone who has hurt others deeply, done things I personally consider to be absolutely disgusting and unforgivable. And if the most recent and shocking allegations are true, it may be God who Ed might want to start asking forgiveness from, not the internet. Ed is also someone who has hurt himself deeply, and on several occasions destroyed everything around him, scorched the earth of evidence, and moved on to the next group. Some hangers on desperately staying with him in spite of the cliff that shall always inevitably lay ahead. And they tell you a tale of someone who the internet forgot, but maybe should be remembered, if nothing else, for a lesson that can be learned from it all. Because maybe you know a person like Spax in your life. Maybe it's an internet friend. Maybe it's a lover. Maybe it's a family member. Or maybe it's even yourself. And if that's the case, you or the ones around you deserve so much better. Because in the end, we all have to move on through all the hurt and pain that despite what others say of us, we all determine our own fate. Despite what we may think of ourselves, we have to move on. Otherwise, the cycle of hurt and pain will repeat itself forever. That if someone is hurting you, sucking you down into that deep, ugly pit, you owe it to yourself to stand up and walk away. After all, at least on the internet, it's as easy as shutting off the computer. It may be more difficult if it's in real life than not over the internet, but it's worth the effort. Remember that your life is precious, and that you only get one of them, and that you deserve better than this cycle of self-inflicted loss. There's only one way to escape the cycle. Move on and away, or else you will be trapped by your own selfish and destructive actions inflicting pain on everyone around you, or you'll find yourself caught in the web of another doing just that. Stand up. Move on. Grow the fuck up. Face reality. 
take some fucking responsibility. And then maybe, with time, you'll finally learn that the abyss, the pit, the void, is only just a bad dream. Well, that was quite the ride. I hope it was well worth it and that you got something out of this. If you did enjoy it and got to the very end, then I highly recommend you go check out my Richard Kuda documentary. There will be a few smaller Internet Fables episodes coming out in the near future, but the next big project is going to be the Nostalgia Critic slash Channel Awesome slash That Guy of the Glasses multi-part ultra super mega retrospective. I think you get the point. Shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon, all of whom from any tier get access to my Discord server where from now on, at least twice a week, we're going to be having Nostalgia Critic slash Linkara slash General That Guy of the Glasses watch parties until we finish literally every single fucking episode in uh, preparation for this grand retrospective. So, you know, if that sounds like fun to you and you'd like to hang out and watch some quality content, then consider supporting me on Patreon. A particular very special thank you and shout out to my great night owls, Macabre Kaiju, Ho Hot, and Medusa's Hex, and my arch owl, the always great and chi vibe Zen Garden Party. Until next time, this has been Dylan the Night Owl, flying off. <laughs>